Oh my god. Cbex. I just had to start immediately because I just saw you raided. So let me let me finish this tweet before I get the rest of the crew in here. How was your stream? You were, you were playing magics, right? Okay, okay, tweeting. I'm doing this thing. <laughs> You're fine. But it, my alert did go off, which I'm very excited about because last time it was too quiet. <laughs> did you open anything good? Did you get all the goods? You're fine. They can't hear you yet. So now it just sounds like I talked to myself. <laughs> Um, I just forgot how to type. I gotta just finish this tweet so people know that we're here to learn about good stuff and see sweet pictures of what our crafting areas look like slash streaming areas. I usually... I can't spell. There we go. Boop! Okay. Do your thing! Oh yeah, right? I actually was dancing to that song that played the cantina song. So it's going to be great because the people that are in the panel with me will not have any, they won't hear it. So I'll just randomly start singing and they're going to be like, what's wrong with Ariel? And it'll be fine. Okay. I need to make sure. Oh no, an error. All right. I'm going to get our guests in here then, but I wanted to make sure how this looked. Okay. Uh, brain. How do I work a computer that I pushed the wrong button? Oh my God. <gasps> Foil Space Godzilla! Oh my god, I have to watch that. I'm very jealous. I did buy a booster box of Ikoria and two pre-release packs, so I'm gonna do a Booyah! Hey, I know who that is. <laughs> okay, uh, here we go. Which, I think it's this scene that I edited. Yay! Okay. Uh, all right, you guys are unmuted. You may speak. Please don't scream. Oh, yes. <laughs> oh, yeah. Yay! Yay! <laughs> so... This will be the first time I'm doing this, so if anybody in chat has feedback, I would love to hear it. You can either whisper it to me or say it. So you can join. I can invite you to the group I have on Facebook, Zbex, and uh, I we can plan a panel to do. But I figured since it's pretty likely that every con is going to be canceled in the future of this year, we wanted to do, or I uh, I wanted to do the panels that I would have been presenting with these awesome people. So. Hi, I, is it okay if I say your real name on the internet or can I call you Morse code? <laughs> um, uh, I'm fine. Oh, real name's oh, fine. Oh, yeah. Me. Okay. I, I also was talking to chat. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> um, I will one day figure out how to rescale the um, image of everyone, um, but I didn't have time. I thought I figured it out, but got the best of me. It's great. It's great. Okay. A crafty panel. Yes. Hey, Aleth. How are you doing today? I I saw you earlier in uh, Crystal's chat. I'm excited you're here. Real name. Okay, Sean. Thank you for being here. <laughs> I was just thinking about how we should do a crafter noon stream, but that's that's what I was thinking. Oh, by the way, friends, I forgot to mention this to the panelists beforehand. I do swear. I mean, try not to like be a complete sailor if you have to be. But um, I mean, oh, <laughs> I also swear, so. <laughs> I do the swears. I'm leaving. I'm leaving right now. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> um, yeah, so I have lots of pictures. I can definitely resize things, so if anyone wants, like, close-ups and stuff. Oh, hey, Brand! How's it going? You're here for me, right? Oh, it's Cam. I know. He's, he's here for me. <laughs> oh, hey, Fred. We have so many good awesome people in here tonight good evening how are you doing good evening okay uh i'm gonna go to the next my slide my tongue just got like really itchy your oh. tongue <laughs> okay. yeah it's Do, really itchy oh man i might you should see my back right now <laughs> did you just, just i mean sometimes but not like all the time oh it is yes it is very evening for you. I forgot that you are, you know, a little far away. When people live in Canada, I just assume everyone lives in Vancouver. <laughs> and that I can drive to them. That's just the map for me of Canada. It's just Vancouver. <laughs> to be fair, it's usually Vancouver or Toronto. Yes, this is fair. I didn't realize how far east Toronto was, though. So, like, eh, I, I'm dumb. <laughs> 
Oh, this is true. I you did, I forgot you used to live there, and then you moved. I don't. Re you don't have to tell me exactly where you are. I I can't remember specifically anymore. Oh oh, you're very far away. Okay, I'm so hot. It's so hot up here in this room. Anyway, but you were talking about your itchy tongue. Chat got a really cool view of my back yesterday because I'm currently doing a uh, allergy like patch test on my back. So for like two days, I just had this like giant sheet on my back of just all these dots and they removed it today. Thank the Lord. But uh, it's still itchy, it's but uh, I, I at least have one positive allergy. The rest of them we're going to find out on Friday to lavender oil. Oh, nice. I'll get you some for your birthday. Please, no. <laughs> I will keep that in mind. I apparently, that's, oh my God. yeah. Oh, you were with me, Kat. You saw what my disgusting lips look like after C2E2. We were trying to yeah. figure out what the fuck happened. Oh, so. is that what happened? You were allergic? Uh, oh. They're assuming it is an allergy since it is still happening, so... And it's in tons of stuff. Lavender oil is Yeah, it's in common. everything. Yeah, so oh, no. I was trying to wonder, if I was trying to find out if it has, like, another name so I can actually find it on ingredients. And instead of just looking for lavender oil, I didn't know if it had, like, a fancy name. So, yeah, I love makeup, so I'm going to cry about it later. Yeah. I need to get the allergy test because I had that crazy reaction, and all the allergists are closed down here, so... I'm just living my life. Oh no! I went to the pens. I went to the dermatologist, and I, yeah. at first they wouldn't give it to me. But then I was like, "Here's my arm," and they were like, "Oh God," because my arm also oh. is very gross. It's like very like I got rash and it's a little bumpy and it's gross. Anyway, this this is what I talked to stream about. They they're they're <laughs> fine, but um, yeah, it's pretty gross. I forgot to tell my own Discord that I was live. I'm sorry. One second. <laughs> I'm so good at this stuff, guys. I do this every week. <laughs> Here, listen to my typing. Click, 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 click. Oh, I can't spell. Oh, God. Boop. Send. And then. There we go. Okay, just send it to this one. Boop. There we go. Now we're cooking. Right. With grease. <gasps> Phoenix King, how are you doing? I'm so happy to see you here. I just finished packaging up your your special giveaway prize, and I will soon mail them out when I go to the post office. Just, yeah, just rub a bunch of stuff on your back. It's fine. That's literally what the patch test is. But I like that. I know a few of these people, and I'm really sorry if I've forgotten your real name that goes with your username. It's been quarantine. I have only been reading people's internet names recently, so <laughs> yeah, everyone's real name is just going out the window. So, Death Bright, I'm sure I actually know your real name, but I'm sorry. <laughs> quarantine. Right now, I'm looking at physical people's faces. It's not yeah. something we've been doing for a couple oh, of months. I'm going to get rid of chat so we can see the. Oh, I can't get rid of chat. I don't know how to get. Never mind. I don't care. You just have to see it. I apologize. Hey, Sistor. Hey. <gasps> Christy. Well, hello, Kirsty. Oh, Kurt. I can't freaking read. Kirsty. Is it Kirsty? I am blind, even though I wear glasses. Um, it's Amanda, the person who's gonna be working on my final emote soon. Soon. Okay. Hmm. Let's introduce ourselves. We've got. We can talk to chat all night long, but. T that is cursed. That is a good good way of saying Kirsty. Okay, I'm gonna go to the next slide and everyone's gonna introduce themselves. Y'all know me mostly, but I'll I'll go last. Here we go. Whoa bam! Oh, uh, I might have to move our faces around um, during this just so you know we can go. So we'll just go in the order of the pictures that aren't currently covered. So, Angry Pixie Design, why don't you tell everyone who you are? Hi. Okay, I'm back. Hi Marie, sorry. I'm Angry Pixie Design. And I've been cosplaying since 2006, and I really like doing props. So I do. I've been doing a lot of like creatures lately. So I do like molding and casting to make aliens and stuff. That's what I'm like really into right now. Them aliens. And uh, should I say something about my space? Uh, uh yeah, just like what you use the most. What since, you work with. since my space is like a lot of like liquid chemicals, and it's really messy, I have to like really think about that and then I also like started doing leather work lately so I had to like reorganize my space to suit the new material I think a lot about that and I also thankfully <gasps> oh no she no. went quiet 
Marie, can't we can't hear, hear you. you. Sorry. Oh, there we go. <laughs> there we go. I my mic was my mouse was right over the buttons. Yeah, I was just saying that I also am very fortunate to have a little bit of an outdoor space, so I can be flexible when I'm doing any projects that are really fumy or wet or whatever. I have a space to do that as well. Yay! Can't cosplay. Oh, um, I missed the bit of what we're doing. Are we just saying who we are? <laughs> Get out! <laughs> I, I was adjusting my audio. My audio was peaking. I was adjusting it. Okay, okay. okay. We're going to introduce yourselves. We're going to talk okay. about your favorite material, which can tie into like the okay. space that you use, and just like maybe yeah. how long you've been cosplaying. I don't know if you said that, Marie. Okay. I was. I'm, I listened. I swear. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, I'm I'm Kent Cosplay. Uh, one of my favorite materials uh, to work with recently has been PLA 3D printing and casting. Uh, I've been really getting into that uh, recently now that I have a little bit of a larger space. And uh, I've been cosplaying for, gosh, like five, six years, something like that. I don't know. First year I met Ariel is when I started cosplaying. So. Uh, I don't know what that was. <laughs> that was like <laughs> forever. It's too long At least ago. five years ago. <laughs> All right, Miss Dio. Okay, um, I have my mic on mute once in a while because my crafting space is in a basement, so you're gonna, you might hear feet. Um, my name is Miss Tayo. I have been cosplaying since 2016, but I have been sewing for 21 years. Um, yeah, my sewing education is now old enough to drink. Um, so yeah, I'm primarily a seamstress. Uh, I have a degree in apparel uh, design, and um, I. What was the other thing I'm supposed to say about my organization? Uh, just your favorite material. So that kind of goes in what you're talking about. Yeah, sewing stuff, and <clears throat> I have lots of stuff. Um, I've been collecting um, all sorts of things for 21 years now. Uh, and yeah, so I have uh, a lot of really neat things, uh, little baubles and I really, one of my favorite crafting things, I really like details work, like detail items uh, on sewn garments. So I have a lot of like buttons. I just showed uh, our lovely panelists my buttons bag uh, that I'm organizing now. Uh, lots of flowers um, along with, you know, all the other things that come with sewing. So yeah. Uh, I'm sorry if you see my desktop. I'm very good at showing it to everyone. So, <laughs> just I have problems. It's just what happens. Okay, I have to move this thing. We're gonna. I'm gonna move our faces now. Oh no. Okay, Valkyrie Studios, your turn. Hi there. Uh, my name is Kat. On the internet, I go by Valkyrie Studios. I've been cosplaying for just under ten years now. That's kind of crazy. That that's a number that I can say. Um, I've crafted all through college, I craft in the little apartment, I do a little bit of everything nowadays, honestly, um, 3D printing, props, costumes, I've done large armor in the past, uh, I, I like to sort of expand my horizons and do, like, detail things and big things, so, it's been good. Sweet, I just realized I put a command in my title of my stream and I never actually wrote the command, so... If you do exclamation point special, it will do nothing. <laughs> so, jokes on you guys. I'm a professional. Okay. Um, what did I tell people to do? Okay, hello. You all know me. Um, maybe I guess, but I'm Ariel Air Bubbles Cosplay. I've been cosplaying for nine years. Yes, nine years ish. But I started out as a costume designer, and then uh. I started making costumes. Uh, I prefer to work with like warbler and those kind of materials. I don't like foam, but sometimes I use it. So my space is generally more surrounding like uh, safety, making sure I don't burn my carpet, which <coughs> I've done. Um, but yeah, and then also making sure I have a workshop in the garage so my husband doesn't kill me because that's his computer back there. We share an office. I think that was all the questions I asked you guys. I can't remember now. Okay. <laughs> it's really hot. Our panel about organization, uh, the organization. Of it. Yeah. yeah. Um, 
but yeah, uh, I do. But and as we go into the panel, uh, you you guys can totally Q and A since we're not actually like a live panel, like time to an hour exactly. Um, you yeah, guys, we got the guy walking through with the sign. Yeah, oh man, I should have. Oh, damn it, I should have told Tyler to do that. That would have been so funny. <laughs> that would have been so great. Um, it could be worse. It could be like C two E two, and halfway through our panel, they're like, "Ah, oh, yes, the show floor is now closed." Oh yeah, home. and we're just like. We were the last panel, but they made us start a half an hour before the show closed. And I was like, oh, maybe we're going to go over. And they're like, you guys got to stop now. And we're like, cool. Well, F you too, I guess. <laughs> um, Snowho uh, was talking to Angry Pixie Design. We'd love to hear how you make and run molds in the space without making a mess. Oh, perfect. So, um, well, yeah. wait, I have a picture I, of your I space. Should I, <laughs> should I show <laughs> the picture? Yeah, you, should, you should show the carpet. It looks awful. Okay. Uh, it is. It is a mess, and unfortunately, that carpet is gone now. But I've learned that uh, it's really not that hard if you prep. Um, but just assume you're gonna make a mess because literally, like seventy-five percent of the time that I've done molding, I've fucked up somehow and lost like large quantities of liquid material all over the floor. And so you just sort of have to assume that might happen. Um, I use. Um, plastics a lot so i try to like reduce the amount of plastics i use because you know like my fucking hobby is bad for the fucking environment so um home depot has like like really thick paper in large rolls that you can like roll out so i like anytime i switch projects especially since like molding and casting is very much like a chemical science and things can inhibit each other or there could be like chemical reactions so like if you leave old materials on the table and don't clean that area off and then you start working with a new material it can cause problems so um not only for the cleanliness but for the actual like chemical bullshit which is sort of why i love it and hate it at the same time but yeah essentially just like tarp or tape all of your tables and all of your floors and just assume you're just gonna get like liquid rubbers everywhere and that's usually how i make sure i don't make a mess but I've learned the hard way because I've fucked up in every way possible before I learned my lesson. <laughs> Let's just say that yeah, happens that with everything. Yeah. Uh, I, I do some molding and casting, not like large scale stuff, but mostly like smaller like detail pieces or like basically as big as like a knife or like a small pistol. Um, and one of, one of my favorite like things to have on my table when I'm working with that stuff is I've gotten like enormous silicone like roll out baking mats which are really great for resin because you can just like peel off the stuff on it that like cures and that's been really good for me to sort of help keep my surfaces clean i also have an enormous rug underneath my desk in my workstation that i don't really care about to protect my apartment for because i've gotten paint spills and random other crap on carpets in places i've rented in the past and i'd like to not deal with that so i'd rather it be on a carpet that i care about or don't care about so last night I was just uh, doing a mold and I over poured it and it overflowed and anyway made quite a mess on my table uh, but I kind of just sat there and hoped and waited for it to cure mm -hmm. and then I was able to take a flat spatula and just kind of peel it off so sometimes I'll get lucky that way but uh, <laughs> something I've noticed quite a lot from just my mistakes and going crap and trying to grab something next to me Lysol wipes are awesome at getting rid of uh, the gooey resin and stuff like that off of plastic. If you can find them in the state. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> yeah, it's, so, it's so hard to deal with that stuff right now because the stuff that we need for molding and casting specifically is in demand right now. Mm -hmm. um, but to add on to what you were saying, uh, Vulcanizer, is that what you're going by? Cause I no, it. it's Kent. I want It's Kent Cosplay, but I want to change it. Or World's Finest Props. But I don't know how to change it. It's not letting me change my username. So, yeah. I know. Okay, anyway, Kent. go ahead. Sorry. Sorry. Um, but I think you just like to add on to what Kat and Kent were saying, it's like decide um, if space is something that you want to like, uh, if it's easier to clean, if it's easier to just put something disposable on the table, or if you want something like a silicone pad, because for most of the time, like I love using the silicone pad for certain projects, but if you use the silicone pad for everything, it will start getting really na nasty and gross. And I've had to throw my silicone pads away because there's some stuff that doesn't actually come off of them easily, even though they're, you know, generally good for that because it's easy to get shit off silicone or the chemicals are so goopy that it would take so much labor and time for me to clean that up that it's not worth it. So just um, thankfully, any sort of technical data sheets or material data sheets have information about what the best cleanup uh, solvents or choices are for what you're using. So just do a little research 
It's all about pre-planning, I think. That is Thank a great... So oh, oh. Mm. I was going to... Go ahead. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you so much for saying uh, material safety data sheet. Uh, that's an MSDS. Anybody who's working with any kind of chemicals should be looking at those MSDSs before you like go nuts and just like have fun because yeah. they like you are when you are doing certain crafting, you are playing with chemicals uh, and that goes for dyeing too. Um, and yeah, so just wanted to say material. I've heard horror dyeing. stories. Of the people paper. setting mold and then it gets so hot that it uh, can light stuff on fire. So. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the thank, thank you, Rainbow Perfection, for liking my glasses. I appreciate that. Yeah, the <laughs> especially if you're working with smooth on stuff. The papers in the boxes, it's really easy to read, and the information's right there at the tip of your fingertips. So don't just go ignoring, oh, the inserts in the. Thing. Y'all are jumping ahead. We have a whole sheet about safety and stuff, but I was gonna say we had good leeway. We're, we have really short slides that just show like some convenient stuff like furniture, um, doodads that you, not, uh, storage devices that we use. And then we have slides with like our workspaces, which will be a great time to do like the actual like big Q and A. Um, I, my Nightbot is, um, remind, or is letting people know if you have a question, it's the easiest thing for me to see the question um, uh, during the in the stream is if you use the channel points. Um, oh, I should have changed it. I think it's a hundred. It's a hundred. I'm sorry. If you don't have a hundred, you can just at um, Air Bubbles cosplay, and I hopefully someone will catch it or I will look and I can see it. But it's just the highlight message is a little bit easier to read. Um, so yes, we will go to the next one and just briefly talk about just some furniture we absolutely love. And then we do have a slide about safety because it's very important and we all have wonderful horror stories. At least one we'd like to share. We're gonna limit it to one because I know we could, maybe two, because I know we could all, rainbow, rainbow. <sighs> I'd like ridiculous. to add something on really quick before we keep going. Uh, <clears throat> the whole running molds without making a mess. I use an obscene amount of rubber gloves. Like, I don't just use one pair per project. I switch gloves literally every time I think I've gotten something on my gloves that will transfer something sticky to something else because that sticky stuff is clear-ish and hard to track. And so unless I want to go throughout my space, cleaning up my space all the time, I just, I, I end up using, per pour, I end up using like three or four sets of gloves, which I know seems like a lot, but that's what I do, so that's I don't fair. make a huge mess. That Again, like they just keep tallying the bad for the environment points. But yeah, I we we all have it. Um, <clears throat> I'm gonna move our faces around again for this one because I'm sorry, I'm not an expert on. Uh oh, someone's connecting. Hold on, hold on. I'm here. Hold on, hold on. I'm here. I'm here. Uh, I don't know. The computer says you're not here. Well, I'm gonna. I will just keep tallying. There you are. Okay. Um, so. These are some storage things. Uh, I'm sure okay. we could put a lot more Everyone's in here. It's frozen, so if you're waiting for me to talk, I'm sorry, but I, it's froze right now. Oh, no. Oh, and now Hannah's quiet. That was intentional. Oh, okay. I was like, I can't hear you. <laughs> um, so people are making dinner. It's, I'm in a basement. <laughs> I can't hear anything. I think you're fine. Hear anything. Okay. Yeah, you're good. You Gucci. Um, good. <laughs> but yeah, uh, you'll see pictures of MySpace and actually okay. a lot of... I'm on the Twitch so I can actually see. Okay. <laughs> Connections are so much fun. Um, oh, my Twitch has a lag. Yeah. A, a, a wee bit of a lag. Um, okay. Oh, I just heard my voice. I hate the way yeah. I sound. It's fine. Um, <laughs> you're enjoying this experience with this, like, you know, to be fair, we've had pretty good luck of technical difficulties so far, so I'm just crossing my fingers. Um, well, my iPad's dying, so don't cross them too hard. Oh my god, <laughs> no, plug it in, okay. Jeez. It's plugged in. It is plugged in. It's <laughs> It'll be fine. Um, oh my god, if any, you know what? If anybody uses channel points and they make us dab or hydrate or check posture, everyone has to do it. Just so you know. I wasn't told there was any dabbing going on. Oh, that's one of the channel points. People can make me dab. So I'm going to make you guys dab too. Um, but yeah, you guys, who, when I've sewn, you have seen my setup. So hydrate. Oh, good. I will drink oh, my drink. Thank you. God, I love that. I'm already sitting up straight. Thank you for that posture check. And dab. 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 Okay. Oh. I, I've dabbed. Are they going to tip me for doing all this labor? 
<laughs> Rainbow, are you going to send us money? Are you going to tip us? <laughs> yeah, you can. Did I do it? <laughs> you did. You did the thing. You dabbed. <laughs> oh, Rainbow is a is a is a wonderful person and troll sometimes. <laughs> um. So here's furniture. I'm going to go to more interesting slides. So I want to talk about furniture quick. <laughs> I totally have this thing. You can see my mouse, which is great. I have a thing like this. You guys have seen it. It's like the most amazing thing in the universe if you have a small space to work with. Literally, like, I have a sewing machine in it, a serger in it, a cricket in it, a box filled with fabric in it, and some other shit that I haven't looked at in a while. <laughs> um... And yeah, and the Calyx cubes are a godsend. You can see a picture of my closet that has them in it. My garage is filled with these. There's a table. Tables are good. Tables are great. <laughs> so um, yeah, I don't know if any of you guys also use any of this kind of furniture in your guys' setup. I know you sent me pictures and I totally, totally remember what's in them. Literally that nine cube is right behind me. Like it is so important me i've had that thing since i was like 12 like it's super useful for organizing and it's the same idea just a cheap version from fred meyer as the Calus. i feel like that's major adult points liking to buy furniture for storage <laughs> right i get so excited when i buy furniture i've recently been calyx I've recently been, I don't have Calyx shelves yet, but maybe someday. I've recently been on a table buying spree because I recently got, I got a lot of 3D printers and I, I got this garage space now. So I've been just buying tables like crazy. And Costco has the best tables. Now you guys may laugh, but Costco has adjustable legs on the tables. So when you put out the table, you can actually adjust it a couple inches depending on what height you need. So I'm That's telling you. That's the next slide. You. My ironing table. No, the table. tables are right here. Wait, they? I don't have your ironing table. Well, yeah, you do. It's on the next slide, I think. Unless you took it off. It was the, there was a white top table. It, oh, it's behind us. Oh, yeah, that's, why, that's what I was saying. This one. Yeah. This. <gasps> Sorry. You, yeah. were, you were covering your table. <laughs> Is that the Costco table? Uh, it's, or it's, it's kind of like that. It's kind of like that. It's yeah. very similar. Yeah. Mine <gasps> gets to counter height um, because when I iron, I'm usually standing um, cause yeah, so this one is nice cause it's adjustable from like a standard table height to a, a like countertop. Exactly. That's yeah. exactly like the Costco ones. It's yeah. Awesome. Those are cool. I, I love them. I it's uh, I, it is plastic. Um, but, and I do use it for ironing, but I have like several layers of um, flannel and uh, I have, uh, the thermal pressing you can buy that like thermal uh, resistant ironing table material and so I have several layers of that on top of it it's great I did not know that yeah all right I, all right. I can tell you all about making an iron <laughs> uh, well I just recently was uh, making a lightsaber electronics and I set my solder down to go to the lightsaber and then my solder was slowly melting through my table. I went, oh, no, my brand yeah. new table. I was like, yeah, okay. That's We're going to talk about, about that, too. Because normally I would recommend doing what I do on a wood table. But, again, I have a very small space um, that I share with other things. So it's also important for my furniture to be collapsible uh, if I need it to be. And that one can collapse to, like, very small. So very small. that's great. Yeah, I know you, uh, from, I know we'll get to the pictures of people's spaces later, but, uh, Marie, I know you use a lot of bookshelves and stuff from what I remember seeing. You have lots of bookshelves in yours, so, or she's still frozen. No. Or we, we still frozen. I think she's on the delay of the stream. Oh. Okay. Do we just stare awkwardly? Quietly. I wonder... Oh, oh, here she goes. Oh, no. Oh, You're no, quiet. Sorry. I didn't mean to shout. Sorry. <laughs> okay. Yeah. Sorry. It's so delayed. I I think I'm like 30 seconds behind. I Just wait a little bit. <laughs> but yeah, essentially, I use a lot of collapsible tables. Sweet. So you hear it here. And um, I think that's really important to have like one or two. Um, but I also think for leatherworking, it's really important to have a sturdy table that is 
super dense so that when you're doing like pounding and heavy work on it that it's not going to shake a lot because it needs to absorb any um, of that pounding so that you actually get a good impression of leather working. So I've learned that I have to adjust oh, yeah. change to what I'm doing. I'm not okay. sure if you use this, but with leather working too, you can get like uh, my uncle owns the leather shop, Ravenswood Leather. So what he has on his giant table there, he has like a two, three inch um, plastic kind of um, sheet that goes over top of the wood table. And that's what he uses to pound on because it can impress without actually damaging uh, the tools. I did a little bit of leather working um, when I was a sandal maker, because that's a thing. Um, and we used a big stump, like a big tree stump that had, we added like this really super dense um, rubber top. And mm -hmm. uh, it was great because uh, it really absorbed the, the shock of hitting a hammer like a mallet on it to punch holes. And it was, yeah, I, I really liked that. I've also seen other forms of like, is it like granite? Or is that, that'll dull your blades. That's, or, yeah. But I don't know. There's there's a few different things for leather working, but I just remember that big stump was so great. Like it was such a great way to cut things and uh, and absorb the shock on our tables. Yes. Don't be like me and beat the shit out of your linoleum floor. Okay, I told uh, Marie to try and leave and come back to see if that fixed her connection issue, because uh, I I want I would love her to be active instead of the thirty second delay. So okay, I'm... <gasps> I hear you. Can you hear us? Oh god, that's so nice. Because it's like oh, I was I felt like I was interrupting Hannah earlier because I'd be like <laughs> I talk and then she'd be in the middle of saying something and all of a sudden my voice would just go Wah! and I'd be like oh no <laughs> <laughs> <That's> <laughs> sorry. Okay, I'm back. But yeah, okay. um, I think I said everything I needed to about tables, but I do think it's really important to, like, have different heights, collapsible tables, but also, like, sometimes you're going to need something heavier. And thankfully, I just had, like, an old desk from when I was a child that worked, but it's tricky. Yeah. I, I, uh, you'll see a picture of it later, but I was blessed by the Facebook Marketplace gods, and I have a eight-foot cutting table that I got for free. And it is my favorite thing in the whole universe. <laughs> I've used it because I can cover it with like a painter's tarp and like do other shit on it. Or like I've d gone down there and cut out huge pieces of fabric that I would have had to do like on my floor. And before when I've cut out large things, I didn't have a cat. And now I have a cat. So what do cats like to do when there's fabric on the floor? They like to lay on it. Or... I'm like really proud that I have pictures of my dog doing that now. Like I feel like I've accomplished something. <laughs> yeah, it's 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 pretty good. So okay, I'm gonna go to the next slide. Uh, I feel like we could talk about tables forever. Does this mean we're adults yet? Really? <laughs> <laughs> um, we didn't even talk about the metro shelving that's on this slide. Is that the the the, oh, the, yeah, the yeah, metal yeah. shelves? The black one. Yeah. Right next to me. Look, it's right there. <laughs> yeah. I have them in my garage. Well, I have like the big ones. Yeah. Mine is a little one. Sorry, my light. I, I, I was so excited about my shelf. <laughs> I don't know what metro shelving is, so you're going to have to explain that. It's just wire shelving. That's just the brand name. These aren't, these aren't even that brand. But yeah, it's wire rack shelving. It's super modular. <laughs> you can like build full walls with it. Uh, just all shelf. That's legit. Um, at work, we got the extra heavy duty ones and I use them for fabric racks. Like they're like three, two feet by five feet. And uh, I put huge bolts of fabric on them and it's awesome because I can roll them around. Um, so yeah, they're, they're great. That is so I, nice. I, so you can look up just heavy duty wire shelving or wire racks or the brand Metro shelving, which is going to be the most expensive one. But Costco also has them. Costco has them. Yeah. <laughs> this is not brought to you by Costco. <laughs> yeah, brought to you by Costco. <laughs> or Ikea. Them, like, everywhere. Yeah. Or, or Home Ikea. Depot in my case. Oh, yeah. Rainbow, I'm psychic. I already hydrated as you were typing that. Evren, you have to hydrate. Very good. Oh, I don't no. even have, like, a drink. You had, like, ten minutes to get a drink, would... sir. <laughs> we're going to get a drink. Oh. Perfect. Um, Is there... uh, There's nothing in there. I, I, know you, I know you asked me about my shelves and I sidestepped the question, but the reality is that they're not, like, super organized. And I'm, like, really, actually really excited about Hannah's... Um, 
mentioning of the wire shelves because I feel like those are going to be much better for like putting hooks on and hanging things off of them, which mm -hmm. I feel like is a better utilization of vertical space. Because right now, like having everything on a shelf, like it's actually not super effective because you have all you have this gap of air, and all I end up doing is like piling things in a <laughs> like in a literal pile but yeah. on the shelf, and, and it's that's... not good. That's totally understandable. I, I love my wire shelving, and it, you can buy tons of accessories for these things. Um, storables is disappearing. Uh, so I should also explain a little bit. Like, this is part of my job, like, is sourcing organizational furniture and also using it um, because I work in a large-scale costume shop, and we just moved a year ago. So, like... I've been buying shelving for the last year and a half, um, which is great. It's so fun. Um, but these wire racks, it's, you can really, yeah, you can get custom hooks. You can get, because they're kitchen shelves, too. So there's a lot of accessories, like baskets that can hang off the side. I have, a, for me, for all my thread spools, I have a thread spool, like, grid. You can buy them, you know, and they have all the little pokey things coming off. And it's zip tied to it. Like I just zip tied it because that's it mm -hmm. can do that. Um, so yeah, I super recommend <laughs> those little uh, thread spool wall hanging thing. And I want to get myself one of those. It's amazing. I also have these those <gasps> giant grids as well. You're jumping the gun can, to the next slide, cat. On. Yeah, I got pictures of that stuff. Oh, I actually sorry. have a grid too, uh, but it's filled with shit, so never mind. You can't see the grid. I wanted to say hello, Burning Lotus. I'm glad you're here. Yeah, we're not playing magic right now. I'm trying to do this every Wednesday. We're going to do a panel because uh, usually when I go to conventions, I like to host panels because one, I really like to talk, and two, I just like to share knowledge so people don't make the same mistakes that we made when they first start cosplaying. <laughs> and we'll get into those. That's the fun part. I mean, this is fun too, but. If you have a question about something, you can totally do it. You can either highlight the message by using the channel points, which are called bubbles, and or you can do an at at me, uh, whichever one you have. Just the bubbles are easier to read because they kind of are their separate little line. Um, but yeah, now we're going to the next slide. And we're going to talk. This one's really filled with pictures. I went a little crazy. It was like I was shopping. I know you're secretly psychic, Rainbow. You're totally psychic. Okay, everyone, take out your magic cards. <laughs> <laughs> oh, God, they're all in the computer. <laughs> um, this is, I grabbed a bunch of pictures of, like, storage things. Um, I'm sorry if there's things that you guys don't use, but I figured it kind of it covers it pretty well. There are two pictures of things yeah. that are, like, actual real life. Uh, this one down here in the bottom left, That is that, oh. is that your, is that from you, Hannah? Is this your button collection or something? What is that again? Those are rings. Whose rings are these? Oh. Uh, they're actually uh, grommets, and the fun thing about that little grommet kit is I actually just bought that like that. So those are color, like, there's color grommets. Um, they're two, two part color grommets. It's right here. I think our chat's covering that up. No, it's not. It's on the left. Oh, it's on Bottom the left. Oh, oh, I, okay. I need But they're this. Uh, and it's like, it's 400 sets of colored grommets. And the cool thing about it is, and this is like a lot of supplies when you buy them in bulk, because I buy them in bulk because I sew a lot. Um, eventually I use all these, uh, but they come in these little, you know, tackle boxes. And I have like five of them up there, just full of different things. I have um, one too. Box. It's yeah. filled with LEDs that I one yeah. time spilled all over my floor. No, wait, Shaq spilled all over my floor. I did not. So I love those. I use tackle boxes all the time. I, they're like one of my number one organizational tools. And sometimes there's like a hike on crafting organizational tools. So I all, I like to tell people like, go to Home Depot, check tackle boxes. Like, you know, like look at those sporting goods stores. You'll be surprised. You might find something that'll fit what you're trying to fit perfectly. So. Yeah. And feel free to check like anywhere, like Daiso, uh, Harbor Freight is a, like a cheap, yeah. cheaper hardware store, and Value like, Village. Not, Value Village. If you're not buying something that needs to have a lot of wear and tear, then you can go for the cheap option, right? You can go for the frugal choice. But I think the only thing is like make sure that you are thinking about what items you have and what like what size they're gonna need before you buy a thing. Because I've bought 
so many storage compartment like container items and then not been able to use them because they don't actually fit what I need them for and also just keep it clear like always keep it clear like if it's opaque it's hidden and you'll forget about it always use a clear item earlier I saw someone also mentioned a label maker and I was like yeah that's great if you got one yeah <laughs> Awesome. I love my cool. label maker. I labeled like basically all the drawers of mine. <laughs> you can also get label makers at your local Costco. <laughs> <laughs> God damn it, Ken. Not brought to you by Costco. <laughs> um, okay, I use uh, the rolly carts are really cool. I used to have that exact one, and then I sold it to a friend when I moved here. I store all of my patterns in um, a photo box. They can come in skinny or really wide, but yeah, I save every pattern I make or buy and I put them in photo boxes. And this, it's really funny. This looks really small because of the sizing of the picture next to the photo box, but these are just weather tight storage containers, which uh, when we get to the pictures of our spaces, you'll see uh, that's how I store all my costumes. I store them in plastic containers, but Hannah has something to say about putting fabric in plastic which I think we should talk about. Yeah, we should talk about that. So, um, like I said early, uh, earlier, I uh, I work in a place where we do long-term oh. storage. Oh, do we have to do a thing? You have to dab, I'm sorry. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Did I do it right? I don't know which arm I'm supposed yeah. to do. Um, dance, we should put those, oh, we should put those little get, prompts sorry. in our real panels. We should... <laughs> <laughs> Is this to dab? We all... Nobody can hear my alert for the sub thing right now, so this is fantastic that I'm just dancing. I'm sorry. I just looked at it and noticed it, but I didn't realize that's what it was for. <laughs> Thank you, mages and mentors, for gifting all those subs. We got this three more. This is <laughs> so mate. Avoid the friendship, lame. <laughs> okay, oh. good. Third, like two more after this or something. <laughs> I know, now we can hear the music, Mandy! Alright, I think there's one oh more. My one gosh. more. <laughs> Is that the odd? That's the video you have? Like, yeah! Thing, yeah, like, it is. This was this was the video I have for the sub. The dab is from using channel points. <laughs> so we should be doing like this, doing the swim to the, to the Superman. <laughs> oh my God, we should be. I would not have recorded like, that, that if I knew you were going to use it for nefarious memes. You should see more. The raid <laughs> one's really like, great, no. and then my follow is really fun. I my okay. follow is Mia Scanlan doing lightning dick in slow mo. Yeah. It's perfect. <laughs> Okay. What are we doing? What are we if doing? If you doing? host, the, the host one is fun too. <laughs> okay, really quick. Sorry, there's some people in here. Adam, what is up? Oh my gosh, I should add you to the Facebook group. You should join us for a panel. Um, Adam does an amazing Ford cosplay. I always want to say Fjord. It's Ford. Okay. Everyone, everyone, everyone on the panel is dabbing. I just wanted to not interrupt what Hannah was saying, but I guess I'll just immediately go dab, and then everyone else is stop. Dabbing. <laughs> Everyone just dab. And then, yeah, now we're going to say it when there's no noise. What does your shirt okay. say, Hannah? <laughs> My shirt says boom. It is, uh, my boyfriend got this shirt for me, like, seven years ago. And I just still wear it because I love it so much. It's a little tired, but, yeah, it's great. It it's is great. Target. I love it. Target's the best. This is also not a Target commercial. <laughs> I, I have bought storage things, things from Target. Target. Target wants to sponsor me. I'm here for that. <laughs> yeah, we need we need to get Airbubble some sponsors. Yeah, Target, are you listening? <laughs> yeah, yeah, I will are have or IKEA. IKEA would be great You're too. <laughs> I want all the furniture. Point deserve an IKEA sponsorship. Yeah, oh, yes, yes. Here. Hold up, hold up. Hold up. Yeah, yeah. Um, I'll take IKEA. Oh no. What are um, what's next? Okay, I'm sorry. You were in the middle of talking, or we were talking about. Not storing fabric in plastic containers for a long yes. period of time. Yes, that's right. Um, so when you are going to store fabric, it it really should be in something that breathes. Um, plastic, can, over time, uh, degrades, and it can cause yellowing and rot in your fabrics. Um, 
I know that that is not always possible. I store my things in plastic tubs, um, but not fabrics that uh, are valuable. <laughs> like I tend to store, if I have wool or silks, I try and store them in cardboard. Cardboard is really your safest option for storing fabrics for long term. Um, Another point to make here is that, you know, if your tubs, your plastic tubs are new, then it might be okay for a while. You know, you can probably leave them. But it's just uh, something to keep in mind that plastic does degrade over time and releases um, chemicals that can yellow fabric. So, like, if you had a bunch of white cotton or white silk in a plastic tub, over the course of time, it can cause yellowing uh, to you know, whatever part of that fabric is touching that plastic. Um, so I, I tend to tell people how long is, I, I just saw a message, how long is long term? Um, if you're going to be storing your fabric for, I'd say anything over a year, like six months to a year, you should be taking it out of those tubs periodically to look at it and make sure that your tub is still in good condition. Um, and I see this again, like I, I've been sewing for a very long time. I have pieces of fabric that I have had now for a very, very long time. Um, and they've been stored in cardboard for a lot of that time. But um, I, I am now in a basement. And so I, uh, I have been storing things in plastic to keep them safe, which is good because I have had water in my basement. Um, and so I understand the need to put things in plastic but the one the big thing that i really am trying to get people away from is using the plastic um clothing bags don't store stuff in that if you have a suit in a plastic clothing bag hanging you know like a hanging suit don't do that 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 is the kind of stuff that's really gonna um suffer and get damaged um so i yeah that's my note on plastics and uh, what it can do to things. Um, plastic bags also deteriorate over time more rapidly. Uh, and I have, and rubber bands too. All of these are things that we wrap stuff in or put some buttons in and don't really think about. But uh, over time, it's really, it it will affect what's inside of it. So I'll be right back and go change everything, everything stored in. <laughs> what? And, and again, if you are actually those things regularly it likely won't be an issue mm -hmm. it's when you're not accessing them regularly and not looking at them that's why you go to like when you end up at estate sales like i do where there's or you go somewhere where there was you know a seamstress and they have all their stuff stored in plastic you just you know stuff over time you can you can see the damage that it was. you uh, can also um uh, what I mentioned, you know, last time when we talked about this, uh, you can also go to like a surplus store and get like those big wooden crates that are old military mm -hmm. surplus crates. Yeah. And I, I tell you, I mean, I have like all my leather stuff stored in there and it's like perfect. It stays there nice and neat. It's really seriously one of the best things uh, you could use for storage. And definitely there... something like leather, that off gassing that happens between the leather and, you know, the, the dyes and the things that are used to treat leather and in conjunction with the plastic can be really damaging so you know when we talk about things like chemical reactions why am i putting that in quote when we talk about in quotes when we talk about <laughs> chemical reactions you know it's like everything's gone through a chemical process and you're storing a chemically processed item in a box that's made mm -hmm. by a chemical process so stuff just happens over time always look at your things you know in a year you should open those back up and make sure everything's okay yeah, and so. if you guys have, uh, speaking of the leather stuff, like the storage, try not to, like, hang up your store your leather stuff um, for any length of time. I'm talking, like, longer than two weeks or a week. No. Um, reason why the, I mean, it's it, leather is skin, so, I mean, it, it always stretches and grows and stuff like that. So when you have it on a, on a hanger, you'll start getting hanger lines in it because it'll stretch at the weight where it's the heaviest. So, I mean, you just take that thing, and if you just lay it flat and then flip it over, depending on how big it is, and then just set it in a box like one of those wooden boxes, really great, best way to store it. You know, I mean, you may have a few wrinkles show up, but it's not going to be stretching out like crazy when you're hanging it up on those uh, big hangers there. Uh, Rainbow asks, is there a type of leather that explodes? 
<laughs> oh no. <laughs> they play that. Because they off gas. I don't know. <laughs> Can you light them on fire? Yeah. I don't this... think there is a type of leather that explodes. Well, here, here's the secret. You just put the leather in the plastic box, wait a few months, then you lift it open and you start lighting a lighter. And who knows? I mean, you know. <laughs> That sounds don't dangerous. you like want to put a canary in there and see if it dies? Yeah, you could do that. Yeah. I feel like the, really the wood Sorry. box wood is a really good option. Also for mm -hmm. Jesus. Also for For Jesus. Uh, Sorry. It's, it's so loud up there. <laughs> Sorry. I don't know what he's doing. <laughs> so wood is a really good that. option for Jesus. <laughs> okay, continue. So I really like the wood boxes. Also for fabric. Again, like those if you can get a cedar chest and store your your wool and silk in a cedar chest, you will be so happy. Like it will keep it so much safer. Um, yeah. Doesn't cedar also like okay. make moths go bye bye? Yeah, it's it's that's why. Yeah, like cedar chests so, are great for keeping moths. Oh yeah, look at it. This right here is a box that I got at a surplus store. It cost me like ten bucks. But I mean, we got these big locks here. I come off and I, I just keep all my leather stuff in here and pretty much anything that I want to store for a long time I put in here and uh, I mean it just keeps for a very very long time because it's all wood it's not nothing toxic that's going to actually interact with the material you have anyway it's, nice it's box just like huge. Aesthetically too, if that's something you care about okay. <laughs> yeah. uh, to add on to that um, you also want to like consider oxidation so any chemicals that you're storing will have a shelf life and often um, dry gases are added to like the chemicals that I work with to keep them lasting longer so that the oxidation doesn't happen and those like liquids don't solidify but that could apply to anything like uh, latex rubbers or um, any dyes anything that you use you want to consider okay like has this been sealed properly uh, because the next time I use it isn't like if I'm done with a project you have to think okay this project is done I'm, I have to store this material now like is it going to last for a long time and a lot of that comes with trial and error um, and, you know, a lot of our education is from mistakes, but, like, it is just something you want to think about before you just shove it in wherever and just put it away. Shove it in wherever. Yeah, shove it in wherever. I'm sorry. I've been, I've been watching. <laughs> we we binge the show Solar Opposites, and there's a part where there's one guy who was like, I can't go to jail. I don't have a butthole. How will I smuggle things in? So I'm sorry. That's, Welcome that's to what our... I thought about. <laughs> Welcome to our panel. Shove it wherever. Uh, I was going to shave. Shove it wherever. Shove it wherever. Who cares? Okay, so this is the lovely spool thread thing that Kat was talking about. I have two hanging on my wall that my husband so gracefully, not gracefully, what am I talking about? Grace, Graciously, graceful. Uh, screwed into the wall. Um, they're magical. I highly recommend you buy like a hundred. Um, chat is totally over this picture. These are just boxes I bought at Ikea. They're great for storing random shit that I lose all the time, like gloves slash accessories or jewelry slash wig stuff. Because those are the things I forget constantly to bring to conventions. So now if I forget them, I can call my mom and be like, mom, I know exactly where this thing is. It's in this box labeled this way and it looks like this. <laughs> so yes. And then, Dude, yes, we've all heard that story. I bless your mom. <laughs> she is a wonderful human. My mom is great. She's also cosplayed with me as PNLR. We've got a lot of magic people in chat. So, my mom cosplayed my mom. <laughs> Can we call it? After seeing Ariel's setup, like in her garage, I kind of mirrored my setup with that a little bit because I was like, I was like, oh, that's so cool. Because I can't tell you how many times before. Because I mean, all I had was a small balcony in my other apartment how many times i've been like i need this thing and i go out and buy it again and then i come back home and then i find it and then now I, and i have like 30 pieces of the same sandpaper packaged that i just keep buying because i couldn't find anything you know, <laughs> right. um there's a just a highlighted message which is really great uh the thing hello friend um it says, one thing I've done as a chemist to keep chemicals that are water or air sensitive but not immediately messed up is to replace the heavy gas quickly before sealing again. I have no idea if nitrogen or something similar is available outside of the lab, but have you done anything similar to that to try to keep chemicals fresher longer? I don't deal with the answer chemicals. Is yes. so. What have you done? Did like the exactly is that? that? So, they, so when you when you go to a retailer to buy your chemicals, they usually also sell you dry gas, which is it replaces the oxygen and prevents oxidation and it's, it's a heavier gas. So it will essentially coat the 
top liquid layer of whatever chemical you're working with in the container. So there's no contact to the oxygen. But um, that chemical is closely related to what you can get if you buy those dust offs, the stuff that you use to spray your laptop down or clean your computers oh, the out. Air, air, cans? Um, air cans, yeah, but they're not air, it's dry gas. It's mm -hmm. not actually just oxygen. It's a different type of gas that works more effectively. And it's not it's not what they would sell if you bought it for like twenty fucking dollars <laughs> on whatever retailer, but at the same time you can get it for much cheaper if you do it that way. And I found that it works. I've never had any issue with having any skins on my materials from the oxidation. So I just use um stuff from Best Buy and I get like a six pack. Actually no fuck that was Costco. God damn it Costco. <laughs> <laughs> oh no Oh Costco. Because because it was so all much of us cheaper need to there. Stop dropping at Costco, I'm telling you. <laughs> if I knew we were Costco gonna do this, is. I would have worn my Costco apron from Idiocracy. Guys. Come on. <laughs> Should have just Jeez. Welcome to Costco, I love you. <laughs> I love that. Oh, it's so good. Yeah. <laughs> uh, you I'm really cost. glad that they brought. I'm really glad that they brought dry gas up because that's super important for storage. And the only thing else I want to mention is uh, that again, like everything on this photo here on the slide is visual. It's clear containers and it's containers that highlight things visually so that you know exactly where everything is right away. And but it's also organized in a neat manner, like. I am not doing this properly. All of my bobbins and all of my thread are in like a one big fucking shelf, all tangled up together. It's a mess. That, so we need to get I'm you one of these. That everyone will <gasps> I need one of those. Well, I guess or I have something real. like that. I, I do. Have... I love, I love those bobbin wheels. Like those bobbin wheels are great. What's those in here? Oh, is shit that what is it? Plastic? Is hard plastic? It's like rubbery. It's it's by um. It's a bobbin saver. I need that so bad. Mine is a box. Like, you do not, <laughs> yeah. you do not do mine, you guys. It's no joke. It's like a tupper container, and it's just a jar, and they're all thrown in there, and they're all tangled up. It's awful. Should we have an intervention when uh, quarantine is over and come yes, help please. you? <laughs> I have to, I literally have to cut my bobbins out every time. It's so oh. bad. Oh. Well, get you a bobbin saver. That makes me sad. I know. Um, I, I just, so bad. I put these little colorful boxes up there because my husband is obsessed with them. I bought like one and now he loves them so much. And so now I buy them, but I have one to hold all my safety pins in. So when I go to conventions, I can just be like, here you go. <laughs> like, um, but then I had to buy him some because he is obsessed with them. Cause he's like, it's just so complicated for such a simple little box. It's got, a he's very strange. Anyway. <laughs> You've met him. He's been on the internet. And then in my garage, I have one of those wheelie carts. It's not that pretty, but it looks like that. So, <gasps> Mr. Yeah. Adam just at Costco. We have the dry scat. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that reminds I don't know how this reminds me. But if you guys do talk about products um, and you have a link to them, uh, you can totally put them in chat. I allow links in chat. So please feel free to link things that you're talking about for those that are curious. Um a lot of these people come to watch me play magic, so I'm not certain how many of these people are also playing with chemicals in their free time, but <laughs> maybe they are. Um, who, knows? who knows? It's probably what they do. But yeah, uh, let's, I guess we can move on. Oh, wait, hang on. It, is continued exposure to chemicals, wait, if, no. Can, oh, can it turn you into a chemist superhero? <laughs> Very serious question. <laughs> Have you, uh, yeah, is being exposed to chemicals, is it going to make you a superhero? This is not my brother, my brother. Me. I'm going to give you the boring, sad answer, which is you will develop an allergy <laughs> no. and you will never be able to work with that again, and then you'll be sad. You may have to go to the hospital if you yeah, yeah. ingest it. Like, don't do that. Like, it's no, it sounds like bad. Like, time. don't get that shit on your skin and then develop no. an allergy. <laughs> Primo is so I'm sad. <laughs> <laughs> Please see data sheet. <laughs> Please see data sheet for if you I touch know. or ingest your chemical. <laughs> we are skipping ahead to our safety, but safety is so important. Wait, I think that's the next slide. Um, I'd like to bring up skin safe chemicals real quick with that because there are some chemicals which which are skin safe, like because there's LifeCast through Reynolds that is skin safe, that is actually designed for skin and for yeah. detailing on the face. Yes, anyway. but with that don't snort it 
If you are going to paint your body, don't effing use Pax Paint. That is primarily for use on prosthetics. I swear to God, when I first started doing Marasov, everyone was like, don't, don't you make that face, Marie. Don't tell anyone that you've done that. Well, you at least know what you're doing. But if you're a first time body yeah. painter and you want to just be a color, do not use Pax Paint. For the love of everything holy, you will literally scrub a layer of your skin off while you're getting it off your body. Do not Mayron use it. Is really good. So I have to say that because I know Sean would be very upset with me if I didn't mention it. <laughs> but I am a big fan of, oh, you know what? I've been, I've been having Sean paint me so much. I literally just forgot the paint that I use. Is he using Pro Air? Oh no, Sean Teller. Are you still, are I you still there, Air. Sean? <laughs> what do I use when I, I have to do it? Air. Pro I Air and Mehron. I, Mehron. Like I like Mehron. Here, I'm sending Mehron right now. Yeah. Here we go. I just sent in the a link to it. Wait, there, so. did I not say Pax Paint? What did I say, Sean? I thought I said Pax Paint. You did say Pax Okay, I, he said, said Pax, Pax Paint. Paint lol. Oh, we had the discussion. Anyway, sorry. <laughs> I was like, oh no, did I say something wrong? <laughs> oh boy. I just loved it when somebody like who was like much hotter and skinnier than me did like Marasov right after me. So her like post about the makeup she used went like viral on Tumblr. And I was like, no, all these people are going to fucking rub their skin off. I got very angry. So um, I just sent a link to Mayron's website for the face and body makeup on there. So if you guys yeah. want to check it out, if you're interested. Very Mayron good for like awesome stuff. base stuff. But yeah, SFX, mm -hmm. ma X, FX, I can't read. Makeup for airbrushing. Yeah. Um, there's just a lot of ways you can go. Water based is a really good start. Uh, alcohol is good. I feel like later. Yeah. Pro air is great because alcohol paint makes me want to cry. It makes me gag a little well, bit. Well, you saying alcohol was good for later. I was agreeing with you. <laughs> alcohol is good for later. <laughs> I, already drank, I already drank my alcohols. It's gone. Um, I think all of us, almost all of us on this chat are like fans of alcohol-based paints because they're just the best. Whatever they Sean last. puts on my body, I will do. I'm a sweaty bitch and uh, if I put water-based paint on my face, it will be gone. Or a mess. Um, I like Pro Air because it's just the right amount of alcohol base where it stays on my skin and also I don't have to spend a decade scrubbing it off my skin. Yep. Which so someone's got to paint Kent so he can join the party. He, he has been, been painted. painted. I've been painted. I don't know how to reverse. Oh, here we go. Reverse, reverse, reverse. Look at he's blue. Yeah. I had to paint him but one time. It's not oh. blue. Our photographer did the blue. Oh, but it's, it's white, gray, it's gray, gray. Yeah. yeah, it's it's gray. I hit a hit a soft looks spot. Blue. <laughs> it does look blue though. Um, well, a lot of grays are very blue undertones. So. Yeah. Mm -hmm. um, I did want to mention, too, that Pond's Cream is wonderful to remove makeup from your skin. But I don't know if there's lavender oil in it, so maybe I'll never be able to use it again. So, <laughs> it can't, oh my God. Please give me all of your things, because I will. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I'll give you everything. I'm pretty much going to have to go through all my makeup and cry about it later. Or just be like, well, I'm going to suffer in two days and look like... I. I felt like I, sorry, leeway here for people joining in that did not hear this in the beginning. I'm testing for skin allergies. So I've been going to work sometimes after streaming because I'm like, I'm going to put makeup on, God damn it. And uh, I'll come back into work the next day on the computer because that's, anyway. But I have like red, <laughs> red rashes under my eyes and I'm like, it looks like I've been crying all night. This is great. Should I tell them that I'm allergic to something so they don't think I just cry every day after work? <laughs> I'm like, this is wonderful. So, yeah. Uh, oh. Yeah. Uh, After Hannah mentioned that there's, like, lavender and everything, I'm, like, looking around my room right now, and I'm, like, counting the items oh, God. with lavender in them. Right. I know. I'm, like, looking at this chapstick. I'm, like, is there lavender in this? It yeah. says, and oils, so it probably has oh, lavender sorry, oil in it. I had an issue with my camera. Oh, God. Damn. Just, You're good. like, super fucked. Oh, my gosh. I, I am fucked. Snow Morris. Let me paint you like one of my French girls. Ooh. He will, and you will be pleased. It's true. I was telling <laughs> Tyler. great body Let's painter. I got, Sean, I got my magazine in the mail. Look, my charm and my cube. Thank you for the follow road trip 4K. That's a very long road trip. Everyone's going to be like, why are you breaking out in song randomly? That's what happens. Thank you for the follow. Um, I got so distracted by Scanlon's cube, I forgot what I was talking about. Um... It's just what happens, everyone. It's gone. It's gone forever. Let's move We're on. We're distracted. We need to be focused. <laughs> I, we're going to talk about safety, even though we've already talked about it. So if there's something we haven't talked about, we will talk about it, or at least a little more in depth. Um, I, I first want to mention the battery storage, because Kat yells at me every time she yeah. comes over, because I horrify her with the way I store my old batteries. <laughs> so, like, I think I literally have one. 
Over here somewhere. It's over here somewhere. So that's how well it's stored. Uh, that's uh, broken. We use a lot of lithium ion polymer batteries, uh, which generally are in what are, what are in phones. Uh, they power a lot of like phosphate electronics. So they're generally more exposed than com consumer batteries. Um, however, they're also extremely flammable if punctured. There are some uh, fabulous videos on the internet of someone poking one with like a knife and it going off in a column of fire and smoke in like two seconds. Oh, um, oh my god, be right back. <laughs> yeah. So, uh, <laughs> Here is an example. So, this is a baby one I just bought. Yeah, yeah, I like that one. Um, if they start puffing up, uh, if the wires break off, uh, if they're punctured in any way, it can go like horribly wrong. So it's always a really good idea to store any any batteries of any kind um, before they're properly disposed of. In like, I, I use like a old paint can. I need one of less, those. It's a little less flammable than like an apartment. Oh yeah. Um, so if you have any batteries, especially if they're starting to inflate at all whatsoever, you should like be this one. To get rid of them. Yeah. You should uh, put that not the place you have it. It's in a in this. Okay, that's slightly less bad. You can buy this on Amazon. I use this to travel with. It's very helpful. Yeah. It helps prevent uh, rapid uh, fire. We don't want that. I haven't had a fire yet, but I've been meaning to t get some sort of metal contraption to put them in. But now I'm a little concerned. I can't find that battery right now. It was on my desk and now it's gone. And Shaq's. Is... is it like loaded? No, it's broken. Well, yes, then. One of the wires is not connected to it. I just put it somewhere else. Oh, that's safe. I know, I'm sorry. Please don't judge me. Ah, where did it go, Shax? <laughs> a little bit. Where did it go? Here oh, was I a found YouTube it. Video of a lipo fire. It was next to my iron. <laughs> it wasn't on. Yeah, see, this one is broken. Anyway, I will put that away. I promise. Uh, yeah, anyway. Oh, here we go. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, you put a wonderful video. Thank you. Uh, Amazon, right. We're not sponsored by Amazon. Uh, speaking of keeping your pets safe, don't put batteries near where your cat can get them. Or um, my cat likes to eat needles, so now I have to hide them from him or he tries to eat them. Even if they're in the costume, he will try and eat them. So I have to then consistently always clean my desk when I'm in the middle of a project because he's a jerk. Isn't that right, Shax? Isn't that right? Yeah, he's ignoring me. Also with chemicals, if you can smell it, your pet can too. Even if you can't smell it, your pet probably can smell it. It is very good because you can wear a respirator. Your cat doesn't have a respirator, so just don't do anything with your pet around. That's my, I'll get off my soapbox. Even just uh, uh, having a window open, is a, is a, even that is a good enough way to kind of create some air so we can kind of flow throughout there if you have nowhere else Please to go yeah. yeah yeah try to try to create some circulation in there exactly um I however had a, oh. if you have the option always choose outside exactly oh always yeah mm -hmm. uh we have a highlighted message any resin printer stuff so i'm assuming talking about like safety oh. stuff so we can talk about resin printers or pr 3d printing in general oh yeah resin printers are a little different uh, there's, I wish I had one. Anyway, yeah. so printing experts, please give us your so, two cents. Well, um, a, a big thing that I've run into is just always making sure your extruder is clean. Uh, I've been printing nonstop last three, four weeks and haven't had any issues at all with extruder clogging or any issues with a lot of the extruder problems that a lot of people enter in. Uh, they have their, you know, their filament heating up and melting everything. It, basically, just every time you see some filament coming out of there that when it shouldn't be or when it's heating up, just clean it out. That sounds really dirty. The extruder. <laughs> clean your extruder, Connor. Gosh. Yes. Oh, I gotta check it. <laughs> I don't. I don't have a resin printer, even though I definitely want one. It's not mm -hmm. something I've felt comfortable having in like a one-bedroom apartment because mine's kind of small. Um, because it requires, like, taking care of, like, the resin baths and mm -hmm. having a curing bucket and multiple alcohol washes, and there's just, like, so many stages and so many chemicals for those that, like, it's not something I feel comfortable, like, doing in, like, only an apartment space, especially because of the fumes from the resin. Um, I'm already fairly sensitive to, 
uh, off gas from and particulate from uh, PLA printers is something I've noticed. So I can't be around if I'm doing long term prints. Um, one, one of my projects for this year that kind of got derailed a little bit was making an enclosure for my Prusa printers. Um, right now, uh, they live in the closet with my uh, washing and dryer machine because it has uh, out external ventilation with like a fan switch that I can turn on and off, and that helps a little bit. Um, but it's definitely something you should be careful with. As much as everyone likes to believe that uh, FDM 3D printing is safe mm -hmm. uh, for like the average consumer, it does give off particulate. And that particulate can cause a problem, even if you're only printing with PLA. So it's definitely something to be aware of. And I wouldn't recommend doing it uh, in the same room where you either sleep or spend a long period of time. I definitely have that in like a garage or another room if you can if you can do it. But if you're in a small space, just be like really careful about ventilation and airflow while you're doing it, because that, that can also have any of you ever. Have any of you ever built like particulate or, or fume like hoods or, or ventilation systems? Because I know I have friends who've done that for like their it, Glowforge, but I don't have one myself. Uh, it's it's. Uh, I was gonna make a like a Prusa shack. Yeah. Out of some black tables. It's it's very. But I haven't done it yet. Within so within closures, when people are talking like three D printing and stuff like that there's a very fine line between having it being closed enough where it keeps the heat and then making it circulate in the box enough where it'll actually uh, cool down too much where your prints actually going to stop. The layers are going to be separating and your prints are going to start snapping off and it's just not going to be right. So, I mean, personally, and this is just personally for me, uh, what I do, I mean, I have my printer set up in this little side area of my uh, kitchen and that gives enough room for them. They're next to a sliding glass door, gives enough room for airflow but at the same time it's allowed to keep them nice and warm in there because they're inside um i i wouldn't i wouldn't quite recommend putting like a air circulator like right on your enclosure for your printer just because that's definitely going to make it too it's going to make it too cold in there for sure and your print's depends. probably not gonna yeah it's, it, it definitely it depends, depends on your printer yeah. brand and yeah some kind of enclosures and yeah. i think the the biggest takeaway from that is um 3D print technology is still kind of new. And mm -hmm. um, so I went to a theater safety training last summer with a woman named Monona Russell, who wrote a book on theater safety in like crafts and backstage and all of that stuff. And that was something she brought up pretty, like, not infrequently. She's like, they do create like particulate in the air that you breathe and now they're in your house mm -hmm. next to your computer where you spend time maybe with your kids and like we don't really know what that's putting off like because there's not in-depth study about it so i think that it's like i just think it's still a valuable discussion to say like is it possible to do it in a place where yeah you're not spending a lot of time like maybe not in your living room or mm -hmm. in your bedroom for sure but I, I, I do like hearing that, you know, you've got that ventilation going outside when you can, um, because 100%. there are a lot of people who aren't sensitive to these smells. Mm -hmm. And I actually left a group recently because um, I just couldn't handle the amount of people who were saying it was okay to use E6000 in their apartments with no windows open or a window cracked. And I'm just like, what's wrong with you? <laughs> like, mm -hmm. have you ever looked at, like what's inside those like that that's it's just not safe to do and and yeah it's, i wish more people would uh, even if you can't smell it it's still creating fumes oh, it's so of resins bad for you. 3d prints too yeah i like yeah if, if i have like long-term multi-day 3d prints going because i have two printers um something i start to notice if i spend a lot of time in my apartment if if we're in the real world and I'm actually going to work and not being in my apartment all the time, um, something I notice is I get um, like a, a little, little bit of like a tight throat, like I'm starting to come down with a cold and like kind of some allergy feelings. Like that's something I've started to notice being around long term 3D printing because I don't have quite as much space to have it in the separate spaces I'd like. 
Um, definitely, now that I'm here and I have it uh, with slightly more ventilation, it's been a little bit better, but it's still something I notice. So I actually haven't done any 3D printing in the last two months because I know I'm going to be home all the time. There's no escaping for me, like, the ventilation from that. Because it, mm. it's, not, it's not really a smell, but, yeah. like, you are melting plastic, and mm -hmm. that, I mean... that, that gives off stuff. Like, yeah. there's no way around it. Like, I'm delaying you gotta be safe a... With that. I'm delaying a project because I'd planned on using a dive at, at work that we just finally now got proper ventilation for. I had to get a specific type of fan to, you know, suck up all the steam and all of that. Because dying is one of those things that Rit has told us, you can do this on your stove. And I'm here to tell you, please don't do this on your stove. Um, don't be mad. Stoves... Don't be mad at me. Don't, I know, and I know we all do it, but like, it's, guys, dye has weird, like, metal and strange chemicals in it that they're then saying boil that on your stove 110%. Some mordants can be, like, super nasty. Not good. Like, have 110%, if you are going to be doing that, you, like, tell everyone to get out of the space. You should be wearing a mask, preferably a respirator. And again, we're talking about this safety stuff in a time, in a post-COVID-19 mm -hmm. world. It's a lot harder to get those N95 masks we need to to do this. So there are other dye methods that are safer, um, slightly safer. But there are cold water methods you can use um, where you're not boiling these chemicals on your stove, you know, so that's better. You can do that outside. Or I'd also like to point out that uh, N95 masks are not good for fumes. If yeah, you're doing anything that. with resin, if you're doing anything mm -hmm. with spray also paint, that. if you're doing anything that gives off fumes, you need a fume-rated respirator. Yes, you cannot use true. N95 masks, you cannot use dust masks, they will yeah, not help you buy a respirator filter. Even the, filter. Respirator, yeah. the respirator cartridge masks right now, like, you can't buy those filters. And I know that yeah. that's hard and that sucks, but, like, maybe just, I put, I put my project on hold. Kat's putting her projects on hold. Just put your projects on hold. It's gonna be okay. Like, and I, I know that it's, yeah, it's hard to tell people to like, please be careful, but also none of these supplies are super readily available. Everybody drink some water <laughs> since we're talking about being safe. Or whatever you have. <clears throat> so to add on to that, um, even if you're outside and you think you don't need a respirator, I would recommend using one. Because, like, I'm, I'm, I just finished painting an alien with silicone and you have to use silicone to paint silicone and to get that silicone to a paintable state, you need to use mineral spirits. So I'm just like getting mineral spirits everywhere. And then I'm putting it in a fucking airbrush and then I'm spraying the mineral spirits into the air, fine particulate of mineral spirits. So it's like, even if I'm outside, I need to be wearing a respirator because that shit is getting in my lungs. Um, and then to add on to the dye bath part, like, I have started, not that my mother would have let me boil in her kitchen anyway with dye, she's absolutely like, a, no, like, we'll put her foot down, but my, uh, the, what, when Hannah told me about, I think it was probably Hannah, or when I learned that it was really toxic, um, I started to just do it in the utility sink and leave the side door open that was like two feet away so that all the fumes would go out that way, and then I'll just like, literally stand outside i won't even stand over the dye bath and then just like come in to stir and then go back outside like i won't because even just standing over like just because you have a door open doesn't mean that you're not standing over your dye bath inhaling those fumes so if you can yeah. smell it you're inhaling it yep and like even as someone who just got a large garage not ju i guess i've been living here for like a year and a half now but with a large garage workspace, just because you're in your garage doesn't mean there's ventilation. We learned that there's no That's ventilation true. in our garage. So, like, I was I was doing a one-week build that I had to do for, um, uh, well, it, mad, there's magic people in chat. I did Elspeth in, like, a week for a um, Wizards event, and I was spray painting like crazy. And we could smell it upstairs because it was going upstairs. Um, so... Uh, I was being dumb. Don't be me. I usually make sure the garage door is open, but like, 
I still don't trust people because somebody broke into my car like before that happened. So I'm just like, I can't leave the garage open when I'm not in it. So I've been meaning to build a contraption to run, to have ventilation in it that you can change out. I've just, um, haven't done anything in my garage for a few months, so I haven't built it. Um, yeah. To the chat too. Like if that's the thing that's getting in your way, like if you Google that, I'm sure that there are instructions on how to build one for your home and for your space. And yeah. I, it's something I need to work on. Yeah. There's actually, it's called, there's a tutorial for, uh, I'm going to get to you, Sean, but there is a tutorial um, online for a specific uh, build called the, I think it's called the Ivar from uh, Ikea. And I actually have it in my garage. And there's actually, if you say like making a, um, what were paint we just booth. ventilation box thing or paint paint booth sorry paint booth for Ivar there's actually a tutorial for it um it's the perfect setup for it I have I that's why I got it another good score from the Facebook marketplace if I do say so <laughs> myself it was like a hundred bucks for a thing that's much more than a hundred dollars um and yeah you can do a tutorial for that um and drinking in hot glue safe or not I mean I drank and finished my sh original Shira headdress while I was very drunk. So I mean, like, I, I would consider it safe. I mean, when I don't point yeah, it at your face and don't times... touch it. Yeah, right. Yeah, but I, I've been creating an encapsule for like a, like a thing for my mold for my mold to go in, and like you deal with a lot of hot glue and you get a lot on your hand. But I mean. It is what it is, you know? I mean, it'll, it'll hurt for a bit, but, you know? I mean. Am I going to say it's safe? No. Have no. I done it? Yes. yes. Yeah. <laughs> Have I gotten hot glue all over my pants because I was holding wine in one hand and the hot glue in the other, and then I went down to look at something and I just stuck the hot glue into my pants? Yeah. That, that happened. <laughs> uh, sorry, my husband told me I messed up on a quote, and then I confused him. So I have to let him know... Uh, no. Yeah, you make it a game. <laughs> no, okay, so I messed up the thing about the butthole when he says, How will I can't go to prison out of a butthole? He says, How will I smuggle in treats? Not things. Treats! How will you smuggle in treats? Oh. I had to correct okay. myself. Okay. Anyway. Thanks for spoiling it for me. I haven't seen it yet. Appreciate it. <laughs> that one line <laughs> foiled. <laughs> Ruined. Ruined. I think it's shown in the preview. Like, it's in the preview. Pro tip, never cut towards yourself. Yes, that oh, is a very yes. good pro tip. Yes. Never cut. I do it all the time, but don't do that. Don't never cut towards yourself. My stepdad actually uh, used to do be a PA uh, and would get a lot of patients from Boeing. And somebody had to come in because they were cutting towards himself, actually over their lap with a box cutter. <gasps> Guess why they went to see my stepdad? It's because he cut his leg open. Um, mm -hmm. He did a, at least... It, the smartest thing you could do in that setting, which was super glue it shut. But that means you have to literally cut out all the skin around it. So maybe don't do that either. Don't Just do don't that. cut yourself and don't put pins in your mouth. Mm. Don't put pins in your mouth. <laughs> I actually... Oh my God. Don't get me going. <laughs> I know. I know. I won't get you. <laughs> I'm be better for you, Hannah. I haven't done it in so long. I'm so proud of myself. Out. I, I, you know what? I just, if it happens, I just want you to know you need to go to the hospital. Like, if you think you swallowed a pin, you go now. Like, not later, not tomorrow, now. Like, it's going to be very expensive, and you're going to get surgery. And that sucks. Like, take the pins out of your mouth. <laughs> yes. Even if you think you're being safe, oh I have a, I have a, we have a mutual friend. I will not mention who it is, but they talked <laughs> about how they are, they, no, they should stop, but they're doing it safer because they bite on the ball point, the ball of the pin. Oh, and that's, that's not power. safer. It's still in your mouth. What not if you sneeze? Safer. What if you cough? What if you get scared? No, yeah. you know how close I'm getting to the show right now? <laughs> <laughs> Listen to Hannah. Listen to her. And stop drinking resin. <laughs> yeah, stop <laughs> that too. Stop drinking Don't resin. Don't drink resin. It's not good. But and it's put, the tasty. The tea cup or the resin cup. <laughs> Oh my god. I, right now, my coffee cup is full of, like, epoxy. Like, I had a, a tube, like, tubes of epoxy in it, and I was like, <laughs> I shouldn't have that in a coffee cup. <laughs> no. No. Don't vote. <laughs> don't. Cat, also, don't vote like, that. just don't put coffee near a commission that you're working on and you've been working on for many months and you're getting paid a lot of money for because you might spill the coffee all over your commission. Yeah. 
Ask me how in I know. In closed cups. It's called weathering. Ariel, it's called weathering. No. Oh, it's true. Right. It was the smell. <laughs> the the smell was the worst part because it smelled like it's, coffee. It's called coffee crafting. And, it's, and I couldn't. It smells like weathering. Shit, coffee. But I couldn't wash it because it had hand dyed lace that I had just hand sewn on. Oh. So I couldn't wash yeah. the thing. Crying. Anyway, it's fine. It, <laughs> it lived. I spilled mostly on my it's under my brand my new sewing machine. Thank you for that Great. follow. I can't read that. It's like bro, bro code band. <gasps> that is such a cool name. Broco band. Welcome. We're just talking about safety and stuff. I'm getting very angry about not putting pins in your mouth. Don't put pins in your mouth. Okay. And then it's broccoli band for the first time, and I was wrong. Well, oh, broccoli band. That's, that's cool, too. I guess. I do like broccoli, but bro code is cool, too. Um, all right. I think we we covered a lot of this stuff. We could beat this into the ground. But how about we go to the fun part where we actually yeah. show you where we okay, work? Let's do that. And then you can oh, see yeah. some of the safety things we're doing. I think that's the next slide. Well, bam. Okay, that's I will move. Mind. I will move our that's faces around. Uh, it's good. Your face is covering your space. Um, where are we okay. going? So where are we go? we're gonna. I'm just gonna leave it here. So I think most of these we've got Hannah and Kat's space that are shown right now, and then I'll move it so then we can see Connor's space. So Hannah, if you want to start talking Ooh. about your space. Uh yeah sure so um. My space, I just sent two photos along. I have way more than this. Um, this is just like specifically my workspace, like where I'm sitting right now. Um, so I have an extra deep shell uh, desk that I've had again for a very long time. Um, and the reason I like it so much is that I have a nine cube, which is behind me as well. At one point, that nine cube was on top of this desk. Um, and I had my machine and my machines in front of it. Um, so yeah, that's my big giant black desk. Um, the space is nice. And then right next to it, I have a, uh, one of those black Metro shelves that we talked about earlier. Um, yeah. So I, I have <laughs> been, I don't know what else to say about it. I, I have a lot of stuff everywhere, you guys, because again, this is a, my sewing room is actually our second living room. So I my stuff is also alongside, like, a couch and, uh, you know, a TV. Like, people hang out down here, um, not just myself. So I also have clothing racks where I hang my costumes. Instead of storing a lot of my costumes in plastic bins, I store them hanging. Um, and, yeah, but I do have, uh, on this side of my space, I also have tubs of my fabric so i have about eight tubs of fabric and i have a barrel that i have up some fabrics upright in which i don't always say store fabric upright but you know when it's like a cotton it doesn't matter but, um because i have I'm a so lot of stuff guys, hold on. that i have like yards and yards of yeah we can hear you <laughs> i like how he whispers but, like it's gonna be quieter like i'm i'm, other... I'm still here the other thing on the slide that you can see is my nine cube. I have those little cloth boxes. Um, those also deteriorate, guys. Uh, when I was younger, they were red. And then I think about when I turned, like, I don't know. Oh, when I moved into my new, my first apartment in Seattle, I had to replace them because I went to pull open a drawer and the whole front disintegrated. And, oh, like, came off. And I, I thought you meant they used to be red. And I was like, what the heck? <laughs> I understand oh, I now. <laughs> I understand. <laughs> And then you can see they all have these little tags on them. Those are, like, from the dollar store. They're just, like, little present um, label tags, like, hanging tags. And I just write what's inside. So, like, they'll say zippers or foam or whatever. But I know I know which drawer is which, right? I've had them forever. Um, but I store all sorts of stuff in there. I should have and started yeah, with like mine and Marie's space first because I feel like we're the messiest and then end it with the cleaner people. <laughs> Thanks a lot. Wow. I'm sorry. Okay. I am so Fine. <laughs> we're Mine both messy. <laughs> Mine's pretty pretty messy. My space is not normally this clean. Y'all staged yeah. it. <laughs> oh yeah, Kat, by the way, you sent that and I was like, that's awfully clean for Kat. I remember us talking about that at the convention. <laughs> Here, there's like behind me you can see my nightmare right now yes so um i'm actually this is funny because you're seeing this space right now and it's all about to move i am about to move my sewing room 
into a room with a <gasps> door on it. Gas. Um, so, yeah. It's so we can get naked. And exciting. Yeah, totally, totally. You can change in there. Like, right now, when I have people come over to do fittings um, for people I do commissions for, I'm like, ah, uh, there's the bathroom. Also, these ceilings are very short, so you can't lift your arms all the way over your head. <laughs> so it's really fun and exciting for everyone. Um, but now you'll be able to lift your head when you come to my house for a fitting. Um, but yeah, behind me, you can see I have like a, see, there's a TV. Look, there's all sorts of stuff and a water bottle. Um, there's my ironing table. There's other junk, but like there's a whole pile of nonsense over here, right? Like there's, I have stuff in progress, things I'm currently working on. So, you know, it's not all staged. There's a nice big giant corner that, uh, of stuff that I still have around. So yeah, it's okay if your space is in flux because everyone says sometimes. Well, it's yeah, true. that's what I got. I'm uh, glad I had that old picture of MySpace because I don't want to show you guys it right now. <laughs> <laughs> it's like I look at my pile of bags of unfinished projects over here. It's really fun. Oh, God. <laughs> I'm collecting those, too. Yep. Oh, Kat, do you want to talk about your space since we can still see it and then I'll move the move us? Yeah. Space is the top, like, middle picture and, like, the two bottom left pictures. Um... I, yeah, it's definitely, like, the cleanest it's been right now, but I also, part of my two, like, two and a half months in quarantine with no physical contact with anyone is I went on a cleaning spree, and also I'm not really working on any, like, crafting projects currently, uh, mostly because I've spent most of that two and a half months, like, crunching at work, because I work in the game industry. Um, but, so, like, computers are important to my job, so they take up a lot of, like, my main desk, but I also have a little like ikea desk with like legs that like rotate off um that's been my like crafting desk for like a really long time and it's nice because you can get replaceable top if you ever like absolutely fucking destroy it and they're fairly cheap so i recommend keeping it clean to start with i like ikea stuff because it's it's cheap and like fairly good for the price and spacious and stuff um so i i generally put whatever i'm really like mainly working with on that desk, whether it's uh, like resin stuff or like my sewing machine or like my cricket, if I ever have that out. Um, I fucking love Kallax shelves. I mentioned it before. Um, something I discovered this year uh, is these drawer inserts that I just posted in chat. I was literally uh, about really to be nice. like, where are those from? <laughs> Yeah, so uh, I think they're fairly new within the last couple of years from IKEA. They're great. Um, they're I have like, to buy these. There, there's a little, there's a little bit of work to like assemble them, but I have a lot of them, as you can see. I have four in the Kallax that's like right behind my computers. I have eight in the Kallax sideways, and that's where I keep a lot of like my crafting supplies for like leather tools and extra molds, because a lot of my molds are fairly small. Uh, stuff like that. It's really good for organization because, uh, like, the thing with the, the bins for the Kallax shelves is great for larger things like fabric or, like, big bins of paint or whatever. But I, I tend to, like, stack things and things get lost at the bottom of, like, the big square bins. So I really like the drawers because it's a little less shallow and it's a little easier to see everything when you have it pulled out. Uh, and the nice thing about these drawers in particular um, is even though, like, the sides look really short, you can stack things, like, basically up to, like, the top of the drawer, um, in the drawer, so they're actually a lot more spacious than they look in terms That's of cool. the drawers. Um, and you can have them in the things, even if they're on their side, but those are, those are my new favorite, like, storage solution. Also, I'm a big fan of the plastic tubs over the fabric tubs, because they're a little easier to take out and a little more sturdy, and it's better for, like, storing paint and like resin and stuff and spools of 3d printer stuff um this is a shitty picture of my 3d printer uh next to my poor washing machine uh for a little while there was a second one stacked on top but i have to repla replace the extruder on my other prusa so that's gonna turn into like a whole multi-story prusa black table a prusa tower yeah. prusa tower <laughs> <laughs> 
that's a project. And also, from all of my IKEA purchases, I, I keep a lot of the, the large cardboard sheets because they're great to work on or to do, like, paint work or whatever. And I just kind of put those down on whatever surface I'm working on. I Something was... cool about cardboard sheets, by the way, as well, that I just figured out, I didn't have, like, the solid foam board for a mold that I was making. And so I cut cardboard up and I hot glued it together uh, on the sides and everything. Anyway, it works great. So just for future reference, cardboard can be your friend even when you're making molds and it'll still keep everything in there and still pull apart easy. I love my stupid large cardboard pieces. I, I love I don't know why. the people that lived here before us left a bunch of like wood slabs, like thin ones. And so I use them for painting all the time and I love them so much. And I'm like, I hope they didn't want these back because I've destroyed them. <laughs> uh, okay, so now we'll, I'll move our faces. So now we can talk about your spaces, Mr. Okay. Kent Cosplay. My spaces are in uh, the bottom right and the uh, right top. Um, Damn, I how used many of to have, have. I have three three D printers. I have two Ender three Pros and then a CR ten S. And the CR ten S is awesome because it's a three hundred millimeter by three hundred millimeter, so it's for really big prints. As you can see there, I have a Star Trek phaser there that, unfortunately, I oversized it. So anyway, it's a giant phaser, but, <laughs> <laughs> a handheld phaser, but it's like this big. Um, but uh, and then I have the two Ender three uh, Pros there, and then this one right here is basically set up. Um, right in front of the glass sliding glass door that leads outside so I can still have kind of air circulation in there but it's still kind of an area where they can still stay nice and warm when they're, they're printing. Um, this area is brand new to me because I just recently moved into this uh, new house uh, just outside of LA here and so um, I'm still kind of setting everything up that's why you see everything's just I see the clock made random it. Tables. The cursed yeah, clock the, oh, made boy, it. The great clock. Yeah. <laughs> uh, that was um that clock my brother brought home one time and I, I've been trying to get rid of it for years but he won't let me so hey, uh, I, I don't think he's in chat anymore so you should just like go just secretly get rid of it yeah <laughs> yeah I know just go run and get it I almost did that when we moved oh I don't know movers lost it but anyway um so that 3d printing area that's something I'm still a work in progress for me I'm trying to make it more refined make it easier to use prints off of there um I just recently moved them all into the same area and now kind of the the task is just keeping them all running all at the same time, which sometimes can be difficult. Um, the area in the top right, you see, that's kind of where I'm going to be, where I do a lot of my castings recently. Haven't worked with EVA over there quite yet, but I'm hoping to get a bigger table for that. That's just one six foot table there. And it's actually right where my washer and dryer is. So, <laughs> uh, or where it was supposed to be. So. Oh. Oh, I see. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah, see, so it's got like the I see uh, all the doodads. hot water and stuff. Anyway, um, so that area right there is basically uh, I just kind of threw stuff there and it worked. So it is a very pretty small area compared uh, a little bit bigger than what I'm used to. Um, so it's very nice right now to be able to actually use stuff right there. Um, all uh, Mr. Adup says to set phasers to destroy. Yeah, <laughs> set phasers to destroy. Bring up Here, one, one, one second, one second. I want to want to show this one i fucking love these stupid caddy organizers <gasps> that rotate like i keep this on my desk it's where like everything ends up in i have so much junk in this but it's been really good for organization because it keeps everything like super close and easy to reach and i have no idea where i got this because i've had it for like almost 10 years it's probably really old but i always vote vertical over horizontal for sure yeah yeah i have a pencil holder that's that's all I have. I just have drawers and I throw shit in drawers. <laughs> Why did he go away? He said, "Hang on," and then he left. <laughs> okay, I have returned, okay. guys. Hold on. I, I wanted like, to show this just because the chat said that. Hold on. So this is the phaser from Discovery that I printed just recently, and I was like so excited. I'm like, "Oh man, I can cast it. And it's gonna be great." And <laughs> this is the size of the phaser. And I don't know if you ever see Star Trek, but they're definitely not this big. And so, oh, <laughs> yeah. So I mean, like, the file was a bit small, so I was like, oh, I'll just do 125 percent. So anyway, uh, so I don't know what I'm gonna do with this yet. Probably hang it on the wall or something. But it's freaking giant. I mean, this thing is insane. And I wasted like almost all my silver filament on it. So there's that. So um. <laughs> Just for Personally, I feel like they should have been that size. Yeah, well, yeah. I mean, look at this thing. You could do some damage with this. I mean, you know. But, uh. 
<laughs> that is an actual weapon. <laughs> yes, yes, it is. <laughs> I don't have any of my cool weapons up here. Like, I guess I have my spear, which I could stab someone with if I wanted to. But my helmet's downstairs. My, I think if my... I... Oh. That's all I have. If I roll over in bed, I can grab my phaser. Hold on. <laughs> <laughs> I love how I relaxed I'm gonna reach this out. is right now. <laughs> I'm going to reach out to some basketball players and see if they want to buy it. <laughs> Uh, I think it would work great for him, but um, other than that... I Rainbow, don't we don't swear way. on this stream. You know that. Those are the fucking rules. Sorry. Oh, there's, there's what it's supposed to be. Look how cute it is. See, that's, yeah, see, that's good. How, how's this? Yeah. You know what? Look, I got some shit. I have some shit for you guys. Anyway. Like some literal... So, it's stuck. My shit is stuck. Here's my shit. Have oh, I my know. shit. <laughs> I don't know shit. why you made that. <laughs> Scanlan shits in jars and leaves them in places. Come on. So that's Shaq's anyway, phaser. Those are Shaq phasers. <laughs> yeah. Um. So, so anyway, so you live and learn with 3D printing, and this new area that I have is just really, I, I really do like it. I mean, it's a work in progress, and of course, I should make the tables look nicer and everything. Just like put something on top of them, but. Anyway, that's what I got going on for me. And then the other area here, in fact, hold on, I'm going to send a picture of what it looks like now. But anyway, it's, it's working well for me. I like it, but uh, I'd much like, like it to be a lot bigger. See, I have a two-car garage, and I want to expand to the full garage and have, like, full tables and everything. But Just take over everything. with garages and extra rooms. I actually, trying to find my new house that I was renting... We actually specifically were looking for a two-car garage specifically so I could have a larger place for. Yeah, um, it's the bane of my existence looking for a three-bedroom with a two-car garage right now because Tyler and I, he has got a gym. We have two motorcycles. I still need to have at least a small space for a shop. I need my own bedroom so I can move my eight-foot cutting table out of the garage into a sewing room. Uh, it is the most difficult thing in the universe right now, and I hate it because it makes me feel like I'm being a brat. <laughs> But I'm like, eh, eh. anyway, okay. okay. So I just sent, I just sent you a photo, oh. uh, just in Discord. I sent you a photo of what what my place looks like now, and that what it looks like when I'm when I'm basically like oh. that's mid craft. In so. Discord, I can listen. Okay, that's not that's like a table. Let's see, can I can I show this? How do I show this? I don't know. I don't know, know. I don't know if you can. Uh oh yeah, because I can't. Like be pasted into the slide oh i could well then i have to un unedit it forget it forget it's fine it's cool i i will keep it to myself forever it looks very kidding. cool guys. if i can if i get added at the end i'll do it but this is a live slide so i don't want you to see all my favorites and all my porn. wait we're live huh? <laughs> no what we're not. <laughs> okay uh marie is looking for something i think okay so well, she looks. Uh, I will move. So this is a crazy. I'm sorry. This is crazy. So I will quickly. I'll quickly talk about my shit, um, which all of you really know anyway. So um, this bottom left, people are probably familiar with. This this is where I, I stream crafting stuff from. Does this setup look familiar? It's a Calyx bookshelf with I stupidly thought I was saving money by painting it myself, buying a brown one. Don't do that. It did not save me money. It made me go crazy. Um, I also learned that lacquer paint is very bad for you. So, yep. Painted that in my garage. <laughs> Maybe got a little high. Um, but yeah, I have a, I don't know how long this is. I think it's six feet or something what? long. And then these little drawers. I don't know we're allowed food. My boyfriend just came downstairs and handed me this beautiful bowl of food. Can I have it? <laughs> oh, no. I don't drop it. <laughs> Dang it. <laughs> Tyler, bring Please me drop food. It. It'll be on the top. <laughs> Mail it to me. Switch fails. Oh my god, I wish you could smell it. It's really nice. Oh my goodness. <laughs> um, that was nice. I want it. I'm so jealous. Uh, He's great. I love him. The... Uh, okay, so I shit you not, when I had to buy a new sewing machine, I had to ask them the dimensions because I wanted to make sure it would still fit in the cube. <laughs> I was like, it can't be taller than this got to be it's got to be shorter so it still fits in my cube so thankfully it still fit and then these drawers they're very expensive but they're really nice so i love them very much i mean like how it was talking about with the drawers that go into the bookcases this is not brought you by ikea but 
they just make good furniture. Um, they because no, it's brought to you by Costco. <laughs> Maybe Amazon, one of those. I don't know. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> but uh, they're very sturdy and you can fit a lot of shit in them, which is great. But if you do get something stuck behind it, it's a pain in the ass to pull out. Ask me how I know. Um, see, you'll notice with my area, I'm missing a lot of shelves. I see all your guys' areas with all the shelves. I am I got, like, tables. And, like, oh. that's it. <laughs> I need to get some stuff. Uh, you should see Tyler's area. It's very clean compared to mine. And it has, like, one shelf. And I have, like, a hundred. Like, over here on the far right, like, I... There's a... There have two bookshelves. Because one is just to hold shit that looks cute. And the other is to hold all my wigs. Because I have nowhere else to put them. Um, and then this is my stream setup. I, I got, it's actually kind of similar to what you've seen, cat, we have dual monitors and a computer, I'm, whatever, that was the dumbest thing I've ever said. There's two monitors and a computer! <laughs> um, and there's that spool of thread thing we were talking about, um, yes, that's, that's it. Uh, we can talk more about stream stuff if you guys have specific questions about, like, what I use, um, for stream. And then these uh, bottom, the middle, th bottom three, those are all taken in my garage. Uh, I have, we have a double deep garage, a tandem garage. So I'm in like the back. Um, there's that Ivar shelf unit I talked about. It's where I put all my paint, all my resins, all my dyes, literally, and all my foam uh, all goes in there. Um, and then this is my prized eight foot cutting table. And I do have a stream set up down there as well for whenever I get my ass off the couch and do shit. Um, and then that's just an, another view and I've got another table. I've got so much shit in there. I'm sorry. And then these are how I store all the costumes, all the boxes. That's how I store everything in my garage. Um, make sure to find out if you ever move somewhere new or you just don't know, like you're starting, find out if your garage is like... Um, well insulated um, because that will help determine what kind of boxes to use. If you don't use weather type boxes and you find out you live in a humid area and your garage isn't very well insulated or it gets too cold or whatever, you could ruin your things. So this garage or we have is hot. well insulated. Uh, that is also something yeah, you should find out. <laughs> <laughs> this garage stays very cool. The last garage I had was a detached garage, so it got very hot in the summer and very, very cold in the winter. This one is pretty average temperature. Like, it's not, it doesn't get too cold and it doesn't get too hot. So, yeah. Yeah, humidity My in Seattle. My garage is essentially out, like, just outside. Yeah. I have a detached garage and it's like, it's just outside. <laughs> yeah. I want. I've been wanting to look into ways to keep kind of uh, garages and work areas kind of temperate. Because I mean, my garage is like a micro, like an oven during day day. Well, because you, you live in California. Yeah. <laughs> Distinctly I mean, LA. Problems. Yes, that's fair. So th those are good things to research and find out and do. Like it's. Uh, we have the. Um, what the fuck are they called? The little things with the little beads in them that collect the water. Silica gel packs. Whatever they are, you put them in places like you're worried damp, about. Damp, damp ridge. Yeah, I put we put those in the garage just to like help. Um, I'm in a basement, so I have them as well. I environmentally, they're not great, but it's kind of like the, the only way to keep things safe. Ideally, yeah. again, I would love a like cedar wardrobe, uh, like three of them would be great anybody me. in chat want to <laughs> donate a bunch of money to build a cedar or buy a cedar wardrobe <laughs> and um, some seattle trees and yeah do it um uh, but uh i had one more thing and it literally just left my brain canal it's like gone forever i was talking about the beads and my nose itches um no it's that's that's what i have I, I haven't had issues with heat. The only issues I've had with armor and moving it was, like, when I moved in the middle of the summer, and it was awful. That's what I have. But, Marie... LA storing Warbler armor was fun. Oh, that's my closet up there. It's blending in. But there's another Calyx bookshelf! That's how I store all my fabric. Mostly by color. I roll them to help with wrinkles. Um, and I actually recently went through and documented all of my fabric because there was a period in December when I had a chemical or no, a medical reaction to, um, you know, a reaction to a medicine where my heart rate was over a hundred consistently for like a week. So I couldn't do anything <laughs> except sit on my ass and look at fabric. So yeah. Anyway. Oh, uh, really quick before we move on, there's a quest or there's a suggestion. 
Uh, oh, a uh, specific suggestion for living in SoCal. I used to live in Tucson. Plastic in the summer sun will disintegrate, so take that into account when storing things. Oh, totally. Yep. That's perfect. Mm -hmm. um, yeah. Something I have. Hmm? It's a yeah, plant. no, yeah. Wood crate, not plastic. Yeah. All right, Marie, you have the let the four on the top is all your space if you want to talk about. Because you you used a lot more chemicals and stuff, I feel like, so please. Yeah, I think... I think the, the the two pictures to the farthest to the right are not helpful um, because I don't have the greatest storage. I'm not very proud of it. Looking at these pictures, it's a little embarrassing. Um, but if so, if we're going from the top left to the top right, the farthest to the left uh, in the top left corner, that is um, the uh, let's see, blah, 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 blah the northernmost section of my workspace. Yeah, thank you, Ariel. And that's what I'm using right now for like leather and sewing. And so it has a carpet that's easy to clean that I can vacuum and then use for laying out patterns. And I will definitely take Miss Tayo's advice and get like a stall, a, a tall standing um, table eventually because it's just too difficult to cut out patterns at a sitting table because it's not big enough. And so you end up doing it on the floor, which is bad for your back. So either stand or on the, on the floor. I, I honestly just wear knee pads when I'm cutting out patterns on the floor. Like, um, it was fine to do I, when I was, like, 20. But, like, I <laughs> right. you know, like, but now I'm, like, even, like, 25. But now I'm, like, I, that too hard on your knees, man. Like, well, me too. Yeah, wear some knee pads. Oh, my God, Connor, like, you're so young. You be quiet. <laughs> <laughs> He's the youngest but, person yeah, here. Right. <laughs> uh, a nice, a nice waist tight table like is a savior. Like, and and mm -hmm. I don't do large scale cutting at my home currently. I do all of it in my shop, um, but obviously not right now. But it's because at my shop I have big tall tables and they're great. So. With those adjustable tables, you'd be surprised how many times you're bending over trying to do something oh. until you get a place that's like, you know. Oh. Uh Hello, Alpha. I was like, I you had the same color. I like as someone else in the chat when I was reading, and I got confused. But I'm glad you came by. Um, and Alpha just wanted to say no question, but I hope you all have a good night. And thank you. Yeah, awesome. we're we're trying this little oh, panel thanks. thing. I'm um, hoping to do a panel like every week or every other week or whatever I can do, just because there's no day. conventions right now. So if you have any ideas, uh, yeah, again, chat. If you have any ideas for a panel or something you want to hear more about, um, please. PM me or you guys have the discord you send it in the discord and I will gather some smart folks to talk about stuff so who said youngest rainbow you're the youngest well I don't know oh hydrate everyone hydrate cheers oh I'm gonna eat a watermelon because I don't have water with me okay? that that works I guess it's very strong mm -hmm. no okay that I'm totally sorry. works I mm -hmm. we were totally okay, interrupting um, you but so... continue <clears throat> thank you um, so in that uh, leftmost, topmost picture, you can see I have a nice clean carpet, uh, which when compared to the picture just to the right of that, you can see that there's pink rubber stains all over that blue carpet. So that's my <laughs> trash carpet for doing, um, in that section of my uh, office space, that's where I do all of my silicone and chemical and rubber bullshit over there because... I know it's going to be messier and that so I have a sink I have a like it's like a kitchenette I guess because it's just a sink and a, and a fridge um, but the the table where you can see the large blue and yellow bucket on that table to the left of the sink area is where I keep all of my materials and then underneath that table if there's anything that like would degrade in the sun that doesn't have a uh, like UV protected like container then I just stick it under there so it doesn't get any sun exposure so that way I can have an easy access to the sink and make sure it, the cleanup's really easy. And then on the table, closer to the foreground of the, the shot, you can see my little alien creature Yay. sitting on that table. And that's my work, like main work table. So like, I won't use, I won't mix and prepare mold and, molding and casting materials or, my, or any of my chemicals on the same table. I do that completely separately. That way I can like really make sure that I'm just keeping everything stored consistently because inevitably when you're working specifically in that art form of molding and casting, uh, the containers will have drips that run down them and everything will get sticky and messy. So I just sort of keep it one place. I don't like to move it too, too much around the studio. So 
Um, once I have the materials prepared and like measured out, then I move it over to that table and I do my work there. And um, and that moves and changes depending on what I'm doing, but generally it's just a folding table wrapped in paper or plastic to protect the space. And then um, there's an outlet right next to it, so it's convenient. Um, but then when you turn around and you're looking at the entrance to the office space, you have the picture, the third picture from the left there. Ariel, if you want to like circle that really quickly, it's just the shel those, those two shelving units. Um, and they're not organized really well, but but I decided that instead of organizing by material, I would organize by what I use the materials for. Um, so I try to keep like things together. So like if it's not, I don't necessarily keep all my paints together or all my tools together. Sometimes, sometimes it is that way, but sometimes it's done more by like, what am I going to need these for? And like what needs to be stored in a certain way? So the shelf in the third picture is framed so that it doesn't get direct sunlight so I can keep things there that are out of the sun and then they're in plastic containers if they're like dyes or, or paints that would leak um, but so I have put some thought into it but it's not necessarily like the neatest or most thoughtful organization I'm constantly moving that stuff around like I'm reorganizing all the time um, I think that's fine though like it's, it's not perfect by any means it's whatever yeah, works for so, you in the end yeah. honestly like I, I think some of my setup makes literally zero sense. I'm like, well, this thing's in that thing, obviously. But then I think about it, and I'm like, that doesn't make any sense at all. But <laughs> like, so it's just whatever works for you in the end. While you were touching on like where you're mixing resin and stuff, um, over at Reynolds, I saw. I mean, they have all these different sizes of the cups, different measurements, and everything over at Reynolds. I don't know if they sell them online. I wanted to ask you, what do you use when you're mixing your resins? What do you mix them in, and everything makes your measurements are correct? Do you do them by weight, by volume? Uh, yeah, sometimes I um, do use, like, official cups and containers, but, you know, like, everything that is met, like Hannah mentioned earlier, much earlier in the panel, like, everything that is sold to be used for a hyper-specific craft um, is always at a huge markup, and so if you can find an alternative that's much cheaper, then do that, because the buckets that they sell at Reynolds are going to be pretty much equivalent to the buckets they sell at Home Depot in the same size quantities, like a quart or a gallon size, and mm -hmm. with non non reactive plastics that are are easy to use and i even just get go to the dollar store and find buckets there because like unless i'm putting solvents in them then i don't have to really worry about what type of plastic they are or body and parts i feel i feel like that when you mix in a bucket there is a high likelihood that the bottom of the bucket will still have some unmixed material. Mm. I'm sorry I didn't laugh at that. No, it's fine. I was just sad because I was thinking about. I was sad because I was thinking about how bad for the environment it was again. Oh no! Oh no! <laughs> okay. No, for real though. Like, I have to reduce the amount of plastic I throw away. But when you're mixing materials, often there is some leftover un un um solidified or un like cured material at the bottom of the bucket. So. I can't fully clean it out, so I just label that bucket and say, okay, well, if I'm mixing the same exact material in here again, it's probably going to be fine. But if I don't take that precaution and put a label on it, then I'll probably forget what the fuck was in there because it just looks like yeah. some goop, mystery goop. And, and then I have like to throw... And all that. Yeah. Right, and then I have to throw mass quantities of plastic away. So the only issue with molding and casting specifically is because moisture and humidity can be a factor... It, it, like a negative factor to the inhibition of certain materials like it does push you towards plastics but the reality is like it's only like urethanes usually that have a huge humidity issue and even most silicones are, are pretty resistant to humidity issues so you can just use wooden uh stir sticks and wooden things and then that's less I was bad. tagged a silicone spatula and that's, that's oh, a, yeah. Yeah, yeah, like that, yeah. Uh -huh. This is why I go to my friend's house and do all of the molding and casting at his house, because then I don't feel bad about it. I just well, waste I've, the environment the at I his wanted house. To ask that. I wanted to ask that, because I just, I, I'm running into so many issues. I got these, the, the Reynolds things, and I'm running into so many issues with, like, the resin and 
not coming out and it coming sticking in certain places and i just i'm so frustrated with it so well, i think i'm just gonna the two people above it. you in the i can't there's no the two people next to me know a lot about molding and casting as well as our no, friend no, at raptor way. props you're above you but this way for me <laughs> uh you, so you should talk to them after because they yeah. are smart peoples I'm and distracting people same with project. uh raptor props that's where i I tell him I live in his garage when it's crunch time because I go make everything there. Like this, this spearhead, uh, I, a friend of mine was very, very nice. Uh, Ashley the Jedi, she actually sculpted it. Oh, uh, we sculpted it out of something very terrible. So molding it was very hard, but it was a beautiful sculpt. Um, and then I went and had to mold and cast it at my friend's house. And it, he was just kind of like, okay what kind of clay did you use i was like don't look i'm so sorry but it turned out fine it was a pain in the ass but uh it actually worked out okay thankfully it, it's supposed to look like it came from hell so it works out <laughs> so what kind of clay did you use oh my god please don't be ashamed we just used some like shitty air drying clay so when it dried it curved crumbled so and then when we flattened oh, it, it like, because we put it shrunk. Yeah, it shrunk a little and then it curved up. So when we put it, um, we used a, why can't I think of what it's called? A vacuum, a vacuum former to help squish it down flat. Right. But I mean, if you look at this staff like up close, you can kind of see places. I don't think I could show it on camera. It's, if you ever see me in person, you can look at it. But if you look at the edges, you can definitely see where it kind of goes out from each other instead of being flush with each other, if that makes sense. So it was a pain in the ass. But you know what? I don't mold and cast shit. So I'm very proud of myself. But I I'll tell you what, definitely I mean, wasted a lot high of shit. Heat clays, those high heat clays are expensive, man. Oh, I got like yeah. I got a block and it was like twenty five bucks for like the small little block. I should have just bought some like yeah. monster clay or something, but I was trying to be cheap and stupid, so it's fine. It worked <laughs> out. It's done. Let's move on. Two tubs of monster <laughs> clay that I have used and reused for the last like five years. So oh boy, it's a good investment because you can reheat it and melt down yeah. your old mold walls and sculpts and stuff. So the only good. last thing I want to add um, is just that, like, I the only I, the only regrettable mistakes that I've made in my space are like, I'm gonna utilize my outdoor space more. But like to add on to what you guys were talking about earlier, it's just that like, it is a temperature control thing, and I've lost lots of monster clay and lots of like plaster life casts to mold because I left them outside for a prolonged period of time, and they just like, it's not. I don't even think it's that humid and humid in seattle but it got it got to it so i had to move everything inside and it's such a particular yeah, but... thing because it's like you got to do it outside so you have air you know so you have airflow and everything like that but then too much outside is too much outside <laughs> and then you know not enough inside you know it's like being a person if you go outside too much it's too much you stay inside it's too much <laughs> Uh, everywhere. <laughs> this is actually Marie that's a great leeway into um, I'm actually going to do this on the next slide just so it's less cluttered but this is at least if you want to get oh shit well you guys know where to find me so I'll just cover my face or my shit but um, oh yeah because literally it's over here on the left so that's my shit this is everyone else's shit um, but yeah so that leads me into the point while we're talking about this, please, if you have questions, go ahead and do the at air bubbles or use your channel points to highlight your message so it's easier to read. You can ask about even just journals. If you have streaming setup, computer setup stuff, or crafting setups, it can be just a, we've done, we've all dabbled in just about honestly everything. <laughs> so <laughs> please ask questions. It can even be like, what's the biggest thing you've ever made or whatever. And hello, Fearless Photo Works. I'm so glad you're Hi. here. We're just about to talk about our horror stories. So keep it down to like one or two. If it's two, if one of them's really quick, because I feel like we could go on forever. Um, mm -hmm. So Marie, since you're already talking about molding, like things getting moldy, do you have another horror story that you've learned from? Dude, I do. <laughs> you know how I talked about how I got that crap all over my carpet and that I've lost a lot of material? So the first time I molded that Picasso creature, the alien creature that was in the previous photo, um, I was really cheap and poor. And I'm, I'm also like, like I, I know that you're supposed to know the rules and follow the rules before you break them. But I decided I was going to just skip silicone and working urethane. And so I was like because that'll save me money right and so i did a matrix mold which it, that's a whole nother conversation about what that is but essentially it just means that i had the hard shell and i was pouring liquid rubber into the mold 
So um, I I set up my mold outside. Everything's nice and ready, right? And then I pour the urethane in, but I forgot that I had accidentally pre-drilled the holes in the in the flanging for for bolting. And so all of this like $150 worth of urethane just comes pouring out of these holes and onto the concrete patio outside. No. And I'm just like I'm just like oh my Oh my god, it's a waterfall! What do I do? And I just like look at my friend Josh who is helping me with this project and we look at each other and we're like, it's 4.30, we have a half an hour until the fucking only places that sell this material close. So we like had to run and get in the car and like run to fucking, I think we ran to Tap Plastics, which is like way overpriced for that material, by the way. I like Tap, don't get me wrong, but their molding and casting stuff is expensive. So, because I was like... I had to I had to speed read on my phone like what material was equivalent because I couldn't get the same stuff because that store was already closed. It was a nightmare. <laughs> it's awful. Ooh. Oh my god. Yeah. I, uh, I... Unfortunately, that sort of thing. Go ahead. No, I was just saying that that sucks. <laughs> That's in my first two part. And, uh, I can't tell you how paranoid I was that that was going to happen to me. It's it's pretty stressful because the materials are expensive in that hobby. But unfortunately, that sort of thing did happen again. I had the second time I made a, a mold for that same creature. Uh, I did a standing freeform platform on a lazy Susan with like a giant like ABS pipe coming up from the top, and the whole mold was balanced on top of this ABS uh, pole, and the the hard shell of the mold was bolted in, and I was doing the same technique where I pour the rubber into the hard shell mold, but this time I was doing it in silicone, but the bolt broke and slipped, and so the whole mold started to fall, and so it was like weeks of me having to, like, take the mold apart and, like, carve out sections because the mold itself fell on and it started touching the fucking... I can't explain this. It's too complicated and nightmare fuel, but, like, the mold slipped down the support beam, fucked in the entire thing up. I had to completely fix multiple things, and it was awful. And really I lost a bunch of silicone. How, it all as, poured as out. you were telling your thing about the thing falling, you, sl you started doing this. <laughs> I know. It's like, I can't. It's too complicated to explain. Um, I don't know how to explain it, but... The only problem. Yeah. Oh, my God. I have, I have waterfalled expensive material multiple times. Oh, man. Well, okay, Kat, what is yeah. your nightmare story to give us all nightmare fuel tonight? Like, most of my, like, actual nightmare fuel stories are, like, things that I'm wearing going horribly wrong. I uh, like, like, some other stuff, but I think, like, in, in the same vein of, like, molds going, like, completely garbage, I think, like, the thing I've struggled with, like, the most... Uh, recently is I was molding uh, the barrel of the list, which is a pepper box from Critical Role, uh, which is like an old-timey pistol with uh, barrels that also rotate. Um, and I really wanted like the full depth of the barrels that I'd gotten in my 3D print. Um, and I just did some really stupid things, and I wasted a lot of silicone, and I screwed up my master. Uh, because of the way I did it, because I was trying to get, like, the silicone into the depths of the barrels, but also I knew getting it out would probably rip them off the mold. However, what I ended up doing, which is like, but what if I reinforced that with dowel? However, then I got dowels and silicone stuck in all of the barrels of, of the gun, <laughs> and it just went horribly wrong, and I can probably fetch that mold later, but I did, like, two or three molds before I got one that, like, kind of worked, and I definitely ruined the master along with it, which is kind of a bummer. Oh. Um, so that, that's, like, my recent, like, making horror story. My, my good old wearing horror story was I cannibalized a drill motor to make... Uh, articulating oh, wings one. move. <laughs> like and this then, one. yeah, this one's good. This is my favorite. <laughs> uh, it was poorly wired and didn't have a limiter switch on it, so I had the switch to make it go up and down on my belt. Someone was taking a picture with me and accidentally knocked the switch. The wings went into full out mode, 
for a while, and I didn't notice until smoke started pouring from my back. <laughs> um, I had to have, like, the whole contraption ripped off me, which was good, because I only had, like, one or two attachment points, so it was fairly easy to get off. But I did start that day with battery acid running down the back of my costume, which I don't recommend. No. and That's, that's my, like, actual... Story. I do Don't have do a that. plan. We are going to do, when it when it works for both of us, we will be doing an electronics panel eventually. Um, so we're, we'll talk more about horror stories and safety. Um, I'm lucky my battery did not explode during that same year, because that's when I learned that a, one cell of a battery can die if you don't charge it properly. Not as horrifying, but safety and electronics, we will definitely have a panel talking about that, and you can see pic more pictures of that and stuff. So. And the batteries I was using that time were like regular normal person batteries, like double A's and shit. If I had been using like a LiPo, that would have been far more dangerous Ooh. and I would have been much more afraid. Um, but it was mostly like the motor burnt out, basically, and because when, of the way When you say LiPo, you mean like like the coin-sized flat like, batteries? Whoops, yeah. I just dropped it. Okay, so not... Because I consider those normal person batteries. Those are the type of batteries you're talking about, and those are the ones lithium that are dangerous. Yep. Yeah. Lion and Lipo Well, the coin ones are so like, lithium ion, usually. These guys that are the cell ones, and then... All of these... Okay, because I'm pretty like... sure the coin ones are lithium ion. Big boys. Yeah. Oh, big boys. Big, big boys. boys. Okay. They're not like the ones with the cells in them, though. Okay. So these are like eight. But you would have you would have exploded on them. Yes, but, those are the ones yeah. she was talking about. Explode, mm -hmm. explode. Yeah, yeah. Uh, these these are the dangerous explodey ones, and regular regular people batteries are a little more safe. But those what those, the those only do to your like, costume. Uh, thankfully it was mostly down like the I had like a warbler thing in the back, so it was mostly on top of that, and it was only like on my hands when I was taking it off. So it was like. Easy to clean for being at a convention and like competing and stuff, but yeah. Anyway, that was a that was a thing that I don't want to repeat. But it is a Use very good thing guys. to share with other people, especially since people really want to do bigger and better things, more amazing, intricate things. So it is very good to learn about how to do those things especially if you don't really like maybe someone could cannibalize a motor but if, if their job is literally to be like an electrician who may i don't know you know what i'm talking about so like it's just learn from mistakes is the best thing that we can say so that's why we're telling you these horrifying stories it's also how we've kind of adjust some of them do have to do with how you've adjusted your workspace and things like that um like thank god you were outside when your mold was leaking when the first story you talked about right marie you said you were outside on the patio is that what you said when you dumped in yeah and yeah. unfortunately the second time i was inside so those big globs are like impossible to vacuum yeah. the dog hair out of now <laughs> like that rubs rugs books when one thing as well, I mean, you can watch so many, you can only watch so many YouTube videos and read so many forums before you just have to, I mean, you got to do like choice number three, like phone a friend, like find some someone that is in that area that knows, I can't tell you how many times I've contacted Ariel or the guy over at Raptor Props uh, just for help with little things. And like I did wiring on my lightsaber and I thought I knew I had it all with the LEDs and the wiring. I was like, oh, I got this. I reach out to my buddy, um, uh, Daniel, that works over at Saberforge, and then he goes, who told you that? That's a terrible idea. And then, uh, so, I mean, uh, if I had done exactly what he said without, like, doing a little more research uh, into, like, actually asking people physically and stuff, I could have done, uh, definitely blown myself up or smoked something or something. Yeah, I'm pretty sure I contact Hannah with all my sewing questions to make sure I don't, like, kill myself. <laughs> <laughs> the good so, news is I I don't really have a bad horror story. What? For I've been I'm... very lucky. Way to be a I professional. Can you, I can tell you that I did uh, sew through my finger one time when I was in college. It was my like 101 class. And keep in mind, I'd already been sewing for many years at that point. Um, but yeah, it went right through my pointer finger, right next to my nail. And it never happened again. That's the only time that's ever happened, and now I just watch my fingers. <laughs> um, 
Luckily, it wasn't on an industrial. So, um, an industrial sewing machine uh, tends to take a. It goes way faster and takes more stitches to stop. Not quite as responsive as a home sewing machine. Um, but yeah, that's my yeah, that's my only really bad one. I guess I was trying to think if I melted anything with my iron or anything crazy, but not really. You know, maybe I like. I, I think I definitely at one point early on pressed interfacing on the wrong side and got all that glue on my face on the my like my mom's iron. I'm pretty sure she was very upset. Um, but you know that's nothing super scary thus far. But I deal with a lot less chemicals. I'm not doing. I don't do any casting. I I pay people to print things for me. I I love the idea of it. I'm not gonna do it. Um, so, you know, when I get, when I have a 3D printed item, it's usually printed for me and then I do finishing work on it, but that's it. I do 3D print finishing, but I don't actually print any. Um, yeah, I think that's all I got. I, I, I've been okay so far. Okay, I've been okay. <laughs> I'm pretty so proud of myself that I guess that. I knew I was like, I knew it's going to be the needle through the finger because that's like the worst oh, thing. Yeah. It's like the worst thing, right? That or like a burn, you know, from dying, you know, and, and I luckily I've been trained pretty well when it comes to that kind of stuff to not fuck around with dye and heat and all that, you know. So yeah. Yeah. About it though. Yeah, no war no heat gun burns. I've been very good with my heat gun, you know. Just so wait. Good just wait no, i know i know i don't do armor or anything guys my warbla is like anything that i have made of warbla is no larger than like a poke. but <laughs> that's all i do <laughs> all right uh, it can't cosplay okay. what, what's your horror story you got for us i have a lot of them because i have this habit of you have to me choose reading one. stuff <laughs> and then going me, I, I like research something and I research a lot about it. I'm like, I know everything about it and I just do it and I screw up. It happens all the time. Um, I, I think my video is screwing up here. But um, anyway, um, specific one, um, I would have to say, oh, yeah, I got one. So over at this new apartment, I'm working on the Junkrat cosplay. And I'm making the gauntlet um, out of leather glove and warbla, so it you know, looks really neat. Um, and the thing is, I you have to uh, I had to heat the warbla while it was on top of my um, while I was on top of my uh, finger. So I had to put the glove on, cut out the warbla, then heat it while I was on top of my finger. And that was a stupid mistake because not only was I holding my hand down on the floor. And I was heating it up, and I was like, oh, it's just going to get a little toasty. It's not going to get that warm. And then and then it melted the warbler, melted the warbler to the glove, and then I was melting my floor, too. So my hand was melted to the floor, and then the warbler was melted to the glove that's melting to my hand. And I just, anyway, it was it was a disaster. Oh uh, but thankfully, I had, a, I, had two, I had two of the gloves, so I fixed it, and it's, and it's great now. It works great now. Two but hands. <laughs> you have two hands. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, but it was very, very stressful and very because I mean that's the first time I've ever worked with Warbla. I had like two sheets, and I hear uh, Ariel always talking about these, talking about Warbla all the time. I'm like, what the crap is that stuff? So I decided to try it out, and that's sure enough what happened. If you don't throw me under the bus, <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, it's all her it's fault. It's all her fault. Yeah, I know. Uh, so we we have but, one. Um, we're, anyway, we have a highlighted was... question. I'm going to return to, but somebody. This has to do with what we're talking about now. Can you get melted warbla warbla off carpet? I haven't melted warbla to a carpet, sir. Have you melted it to the carpet? So when I was working on warbla, I had hardwood. I melted my carpet before with a heat gun, but uh, we have a, we had like vinyl flooring, and it did get stuck to the vinyl flooring. And I tell you what, it was really hard to get off of the vinyl flooring. So carpet, you're out of luck, man. I don't know <laughs> if it's carpet. I don't know. I think you'd have to oh, either like, because I mean, thinking about when I've stuck it to like mm. fabric and stuff, it depends. You just probably have to cut it off, honestly. After it, I, I would, I did, yeah, I'd take some scissors and cut yeah. it off. Yeah. Do it while no, it's no still hot though, that. so you can at least pull it a little bit away. But yeah, was, I'm sorry. Yeah, and then, and then you hope they don't reheat it, maybe. Well, I'm just going to burn the carpet like, more. That's how you oh, burn yeah, you're going to burn the carpet. Yeah, don't do that. <laughs> but, yeah, I would just so, um, 
you guys remember the peanut butter and the hair trick? Yeah. For for yeah, bubble gum. So <laughs> yeah, but just yeah, put peanut butter well. on your carpet. <laughs> it's fine. Yeah, hold peanut butter. Hold you oh can also get peanut butter at Costco. So. Oh you know, my god. Stop by there. And then. Uh, <laughs> oh my no, god, but... Ken. <laughs> Stop um, it! Uh, I literally but, uh, said this, shit, this was not gonna turn into my brother and my brother and me, and now I'm giving shit advice. <laughs> <laughs> so proud of but I mean, gosh, Warbler on their carpet's a, a tough deal, man. That's a tough deal. Look, this is the stream where right. I tell everyone to never press anything, so I'm consistently giving no. people bad advice. <laughs> Dude, you know what happened recently? I made no. a joke. I was like, if somebody gifts like ten subs right now, I will. I will happily do a stream of me pressing everything in my closet and my friend and some mages and mentors went and like fucking gifted subs and I was like, I hate all of you. I hate every single one of you. So I, eventually I have uh, to press my entire closet. I thought of you, uh, I thought of you when I was, because I've been making masks. Um, and I was like, this is the only time it is acceptable to just top stitch and not press. <laughs> like, because I'm making so many of them that I'm just like, just top stitch it. Just top stitch it. And, and it's, it's fine. It's fine. <laughs> Me too. I just was like, I, was, I just kept thinking about you. Like, I'm just top stitching and I'm just skipping pressing. Huh. I've been pressing. I, I've been making masks for people i i don't actually make masks for everyone please don't email me i don't have a lot of stuff no. very low in materials um yeah me too i did i got my mom to buy me this tiny little cricket because it's perfect for like pressing the seams down on the masks so i can actually like, top stitch them because i know people are gonna wash them so i'm like Ooh. i gotta top stitch them and it's like the most adorable tiny iron and it's so useful and i love it so much um but yeah i just got this cat look at it it's so cute Oh, it's a baby! What is that? Isn't it precious? What is it? It's the Oloso. It's I have I it's have a... this or uh yeah, Oloso. It's I have this in the big version. So this is just a baby version. An I iron. It. It's very cute. It's adorable. Yeah, it's an iron. And it I can hang it on the wall. So it has like a little hook. Can you please post a link to that somewhere? I need it in my life. Yeah, let me find it. I got it on clearance at Joanne's. Like it was great. I great love price. it. Okay. Kat, you you raised your hand earlier, and then I couldn't hear you, and I was like, that was the first time someone had this actually raised their hand to talk. <laughs> I told you to raise you. When I was talking, I was like, was I was like looking, I like turned my head to see if the LED was on in my headphones, because I'm like, am I on? Like, can they hear me? <laughs> it's like everyone was being quiet. The floor has cat. Why'd you raise your hand? <laughs> Why'd you raise your hand earlier? Me? Yeah. No. Cat, never mind. Okay. Um, <laughs> I'm confused. It's fine. This is what happens. I want to wrap this up soon because some people need to go to bed and things. And I have to pee really bad. But uh, we do have a question to answer. And I will quickly tell you my hor horror story. Um, this is one. I feel like a lot of these horror stories about spaces definitely have to do with, like, materials or um, molding and casting. Because it's, like, you think you can just, like, do it inside and then shit hits the fan. Um I, the very first prop I really ever made was Codex's staff and they, the guy that made it for her in the music video actually did do a YouTube tutorial on how to make it. So I followed it to a T mostly, but this is when I learned that there are multiple types of resins. So I mixed a, it was like a, I can't remember the different types of them now, but I mixed two different types of resin in a bowl that was enclosed. <laughs> so Thankfully, my husband was super paranoid because it was the first apartment we ever lived in. And so he's like, you're going to leave that outside while it's curing because it was like really hot, which happens when you're cur when resin's curing and stuff. So I was like, fine. And it's a good thing we did because it could have very well exploded because <laughs> the two resins, when they met, they went, nope. So if you touch the ball, there's a there's like a bump right in the middle where the two of them met and decided they didn't want to be friends. And there's a gap in the middle of this ball that you can see that the resins were like fuck that so um wait a minute so you're telling me that you probably mixed polyester and epoxy resins together yep mm -hmm. that's exactly what i did how the fuck did that happen uh i bought whatever was available at michael's and i just went yolo <laughs> so but and then you had other stuff <laughs> no that, i was just yeah, what but... I, so I bought like they have that tiny kit. I think it's I think it's poly the poly one polyester that's in the tiny little box 
that they usually sell. Oh, the the the, the like clear, quick and clear, clear, whatever. The, yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, I had yeah, that, yeah. I just it and yeah. then I bought something else. Um, I don't remember and you why. You mixed the two separate kits. Uh, they were separate, together. yeah, because I ran out and I went, "Oh shit, I need more!" And then we went and mixed the other one really quick oh. and then poured it on top. Okay. Yeah. So um, I learned Got that it. the hard way. So don't do that. Make sure you read what <laughs> resin you're using. <laughs> read the, read the safety data sheet. The safety yeah. data. It's coming back to that. Don't be an idiot. <laughs> so, because I could have very well caused an explosion uh, outside of my apartment. So it's a good thing oh, I yeah. didn't. And uh, I keep it as a reminder. It also weighs about as much as a bowling ball. So I keep it in case of somebody breaks into my house. I'm going to use it to beat them over the head with it. <laughs> <laughs> but, and then just tiny, tiny whipsie is I definitely burned my carpet with my heat gun. My husband was not happy. But the, all of this apartment, it got even, we got green oil paint in the carpet. This was the same time we were mixing all this shit outside and my, we were using uh, paint to get the color I didn't know what the fuck I was doing I'm just gonna leave it at that my friend ended up stepping in the paint we didn't realize it and he walked inside my house and got green <gasps> paint all over the carpet we still got our oh damage deposit back I don't know how he didn't see this green spot on the carpet but yeah it was uh what a trip <laughs> don't Amazing. be dumb okay fun question time our friend Mr. Adam he says dream cosplay or dream build so it could be a prop or an entire costume something you've just like always wanted to make or maybe you've already made it what is it nobody silence and not nobody. everyone talk at well, once gotta, our dreams no. are dead no i am an i'm a teacher and you always give students think time oh i'm sorry so I, everyone 10 seconds of silence think about what you're gonna say i know what mine is only because i've been working on it for like ever and won't ever make progress on it. I'm trying to. It, Tamatoa is my dream build. So I've, oh, you're I've, still I've already on. made mine. <gasps> it's the uh, Shadow of the Colossus cosplay. That's true. That one's oh, pretty dope. Yeah. I almost used that picture, but I'm I'm so in love with Caduceus, so I'm really sorry. <laughs> That's true. Caduceus is also fantastic. I'm really happy with. Him. Made mine. Uh, it was my dream costume for a long time. It's the Doom Crusader armor that was like the pick I was introduced with at like the start of the slideshow. That was oh, my shit. dream costume for a really long time. It lives on a giant mannequin that away in my apartment and it's terrifying. Oh fuck. Oh, actually, actually. I'm sorry, I messed up. Hang on. Yeah, I want to see that. It lives in the corner. It lives in the corner. Wow. So intimidating. I'm gonna look that up right now. Yep. Yeah, so that, that's from Diablo. Um, that was my dream costume for a really long time. Uh, Molly was probably like my most detailed costume. That was a really good build. I built it in a month and a half because Ariel told me to. <laughs> uh, Sorry. We, I blame her. <laughs> we needed a Molly, okay? <laughs> yeah, it was some of my best work, but I did it in a month and a half without sleeping. <laughs> um, but like the the costume I've had on like my bucket list for the longest time that I haven't made um, is the Theed throne room gown from episode one of the Phantom Menace. It's the red uh, dress that Amidala wears with the funky like orbs mm. in it and like the crazy. I see. Did you see it in person when it was at EM? Or yeah, sorry, yeah. I, I, I have pictures it's on like amazing. a very old phone. It's a beautiful dress. Also, she's fucking tiny. It lights yeah, up. It's like yeah, dope. cool. They they had a nine volt like enormous car battery that yeah. she was dragging around <laughs> under that dress to light it up. Uh, it's really funny. That's what you get for two thousand one costumes. Yeah. Um, poor lady. <laughs> yeah, but that that that's been like one of the things. I haven't really touched because it's taken me a real long time to get into like sewing. Don't press uh, your seams. Of... Just don't press your seams. No, don't <laughs> listen to her, cat. Press your seams. <laughs> a, a lot of a lot of my costumes up till recently were like super armor focused. Uh, yep. But I've so, cat, I'm of, looking at your sewing. costume right now. I'm looking at your costume right now, and bless you because your photo shoot location is exactly where I want to be for my next photo shoot. So I'm totally stealing that. Thank you. <laughs> yeah. Oh, okay. Well, if you're talking I about. I don't know like... where the Vasco's rocks are, but I'll figure it out. Oh. Uh, it's in LA. Yeah. Everyone, dab. Dab. Damn it. Dab. I don't want to go to LA. Dab. Yeah, it's, it's, it's in LA. I they filmed, they filmed a bunch dab. of Star Trek there. You can come and see me when you come down. I know. We'll go yeah. when That's we're not in quarantine real. anymore. But. 
Okay, yeah. so you're talking about something that's, like, in the future. I, I eventually would like to make Gondol from God of War, because she's a fucking badass, and I want to make wings that light up and uh, just step on every Kratos ever. It's pretty much my goal in life. And my warlock was probably my dream build for a long time, and I made it, so it's downstairs in a box. What was that? I'm sorry, warlock from? Destiny. Warlock from? Which I totally should call it out. You can see it on the table, but this is the helmet that Cat 3D printed for me, and one day I'll actually wear it uh, during a meeting at work. (laughs) See if anyone notices. Dude, it looks so good. I love it, though. Uh, It's probably one of my favorite things. I'm really glad it fits her head, because the first version was way too big. And my head is larger than Ariel's, so when I tested it, I was like, oh no, did I make it too small? But it fits on Ariel. So. Oh, good. Yeah. And I, and I actually, we Dude, took Ariel. the inside of my husband's motorcycle, old motorcycle helmet out, and just glued it into the helmet so it fits. It just stays on my head. It's wonderful. Nice. Dude, Ariel, this what? costume, the Gondol costume, looks amazing. I never uh, saw the Valkyries because I, I only watched a cinematic of the game, I, so, which just excluded all of the Valky- Valkyrie fights. Yeah. But damn, I'm excited. I wh- so cool. It's on my list. One day when I want to spend a million dollars on electronics, uh, uh, just because I think it's going to be a really quick answer. Uh, thing, The thing is asking, does Kat take commissions? And if she does, where? I don't. I work full time in the video game industry, and that takes up like most of my time. Uh, I In the past, I've had an Etsy store off and on where I sell like smaller things, but with the world the way it is i'm like fuck having to ship things to people so that's closed for the time being that's fair um yeah. if you're comfortable you're welcome to post it just so people can like it for the future whenever things get unfucked i want to be positive <laughs> but uh it, it's funny it's funny because the last notice i posted was i'm going to see 2 e2 it will be open when i come back and then like, the world nope, nope. got fucked world was like fuck everyone okay so we got hey. dream builds for kent and uh and miss tayo or, or you quick, already made it, whatever. What? The thing just mentioned uh, uh, resin printer making a helmet. Yes. Um, if it's if it's going to be like a life size helmet, you don't really want to use resin printer for that. Um, I mean, it's going to be hard to even wash it uh, to begin with. You're going to have to get a big bucket. It's going to be a lot of lot of hassle. Best oh way, God. I mean, it, it, people might can uh, might be able to correct me on this, but best way to be able to do a helmet would probably be doing a standard 3D print smoothing it out making a cast of that and then you can do a rotocast of it which would be like a super really super sturdy helmet there rainbow i like breathing so i'm gonna pick oxygen rainbow as oxygen versus question? helium oh <laughs> oxygen. helium i think helium. <laughs> i thinking about dream class plays is so hard because like i um i think i had my dream cosplay ex- Experience, and that was like the first time I cosplayed at a convention uh, was in my Winifred Sanderson costume and with like my best friend as my Sarah Sanderson and that was like I met so many incredible people like all of you and um, and like so many incredible makers and that really was just like a total dream and has completely changed my life um as far as like what I want to do next, uh, I'm the kind of I'm the kind of cosplayer now. Um, it, it, like my roots are in design. Like my roots are in apparel design. Um, you know, making something, creating something different. And I've been trying to kind of stretch myself a little bit more about how I want to approach um, fandoms or characters that really speak to me and that I really love. Maybe not in a way that's screen accurate or representative of a costume that they're wearing. Um, you know, I I do commissions for that. Like, if I want to make a Starfire that looks like real life, go check out Rebecca Rose. I made that. Like, I'll do that. Um, but for myself, I really like playing around. Um, Princess R2, uh, Princess R2-D2 is a thing that I made. Um... I, I love R2-D2. R2-D2 is, like, my favorite character. End of sentence. So I do, um, I really, really want to do an R2-D2 showgirl costume with, like, a feather headdress and, like, fans and, like, get really crazy with it. Um, uh, I also have been considering doing a, like, a historical kind of a 
historical like R2 Queen 2 with like a big giant like Elizabethan rough, you know, like something really weird. Um, what I'm working on right now that's kind of a dream cosplay mostly because I don't know if it'll ever be finished. Um, and don't, I don't say that it will be come out of my house, but um, I am doing kind of a recreation of a Valentino dress that um, Brie Larson wore to the premiere of uh, Captain Marvel, but I'm making it Captain Marvel style. Oh, so oh I, yeah, like, I remember you saying that. Yeah, yeah, so I like I have a sketch of it up on my Instagram. There's It's like tagged in a highlight or thing. Um, it's like a shitty sketch because, you know, it's been a bajillion years. But uh, I... I am really, I'm excited about it. It's, and it's sitting in a bag right there, which is why I'm looking over there. Because I cut everything out, and now it's just sitting there. Because I, like, haven't brought myself to work on it. That's um, how I feel about this thing right here. For that. that bodice, the bodice itself, like, just the bodice, is something like 34 pattern pieces. Or, like, 35 pattern pieces. And then each of those pieces is three layers. And then there's piping in between most of those. So it's just a huge undertaking that I haven't uh, started yet because it's a little daunting. So, yeah. But now that everything's canceled, like I have however long I need to work on it. So I think that <laughs> will probably be what I bring back out. So that's one of my other dream costumes. Silver lining yeah. and being quarantined. We're all trapped with all these costumes. We yeah. have to finish. <laughs> I'm like, well, if I lose my job, I'll just sew forever, I guess. <laughs> I like, I literally have all these lights taunting me that just came in the mail finally. Like, I bought like a whole. I don't oh, even. Hey. I think I need to buy more too, but it's Ariel, all just over you there. You can just leave those in that package and just send them over to me. It's cool. Thank I'll take care of them for you. <laughs> I waited <laughs> so long for these because they're prioritizing, you know, getting equipment out for people who need it for PPE. Like, so I had to wait. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> I'll finish the last thirty percent of Yasha. I haven't I have... finished yet. Do it. <laughs> I've right. got a dream cosplay and a dream project. The dream project's gonna happen sooner than the cosplay. Part. But my dream project is I want to do I want to do a uh, muscle suit, but I want it to be full. Um, I've made one with foam, but I want to make a muscle suit and I want it to be full um, uh, silicone rubber. And that's a really, really uh, big project for me, but it's something I've wanted to do for a long time. Um, I have the kind of the, um, I have the, uh, what I can use to make the master molds, but I just haven't really touched it. It's a whole bunch of foam latex, um, but that's what I want to do. So I want to be able to make some super realistic looking muscle suits because those are uh, really, really fun to use. And they're super cool because they're custom for every single person. It's just awesome. Um, but my other one, and Ariel's gonna laugh at me about this. My other, my dream cosplay that I'm trying to work on is uh, is my Aldrin Sov cosplay from Destiny 2. Brother, I really, I, no, brother, I really, really want to do it. There's uh, been a lot of things. I have the 3D printers now, so now I can actually make the Ace of Spades. But there's been so many like things coming up. But that's something I'm trying to work on now. I got to save up and get my actual sewing machine set up. And but that's the end goal. What I want to do. I already have like stuff all written out of what i'm gonna do to make what and anyway so, you know what's yeah, great so beverly favorite. just released <laughs> patterns for cricket like scale mail so you can like put fabric in there and cuddle the scale mail yeah that's the dude yeah exactly yeah that's the dude that's why i, I really want to do it so bad he's an so asshole it's gonna take a lot of work though but yeah he's a dick Hunter, think aldrin sov is an asshole <laughs> <laughs> yeah i love that just think he's an asshole I want to take so many photos with you, and we're gonna look real AF. Oh me? Yeah. Oh. <laughs> I actually, so I had someone at work I recently messaged, and like, uh, this is something uh, I won't like name them, just because I realized it could probably be taken as, I guess I don't know. If you if you really think too hard about it, it could almost be insulting, but it's not. Um, it's just uh, this person at work. I I just reached out to them because I was like, oh, they cosplay. I want to talk to them and maybe we. I want to see their stuff. And they, she was like, oh my god, you're the good Marasov. And I was like, oh, <laughs> I mean, like I'm a Marasov, but thank you. <laughs> but um, I think it came from that. I just did a very detailed version of the mm -hmm. new outfit that she has. Um, the other ones I've seen are all fabulous. I just have I put a lot of detail into mine. So. That's why I well, said it could is, come as insulting, but it was just kind of like, oh my goodness. Well, I mean, my thing is, I mean, 
you know, unlike a lot of the people here, I haven't really worked a whole lot with like fabrics and stuff. I mean, I've worked with leather and all that, but I haven't, you know, I haven't worked with a- actual fabric before. So it's like it's something I really want to kind of work on and uh, and get to know used to sewing without like a super Do thick it. needle. Do so, it. Shoot anyway. questions anytime, man. I know, I know. You know what's funny? Back. I was just talking to you about uh, about Rebecca Starfire cosplay earlier, mm-hmm. and the gems I was working on. Actually, the pressure pot's coming in. It's actually in right now. I just need to adjust it. Ah, but yeah, um, thank you, Ariel, because that she helped me out with that. So she helped Kim, my girlfriend, out, which talked to chat anyway. Um, but I totally didn't even know that you that i did the panels with you last year i was like oh this is miss tayo girl i haven't talked to her before and i was like i know you were (laughs) blue because i i associate you with blue person instead of you with (laughs) you know the cool glasses i know i I think about that sometimes a lot of people met me um as winnie and so i like i look totally different like i don't have eyebrows i have these huge teeth i've got <laughs> fake nails i got this crazy red hair uh-huh. like 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 it took a, lo- a while for people to be like oh that way you. you know uh-huh. that's what i look like in the yeah. morning it's good i take i love that that means <laughs> transform i guess yeah, so... it wasn't until recently that I was like, oh, you, you, I met you in like 2015, 2016, <laughs> yeah, 2016. one of those. A year. Yeah. yeah, so the thing in chat is someone who I've met who's done, who did a Marasov and it was fantastic and uh, it, it's totally okay to be, remake something if you're inspired. I remade the first Marasov like three different times, I think, and Chandra's been remade so many times. If you love the costume and you learn something new totally remake it like i mean you can do pieces too like uh i it wasn't until recently that i actually remade like the pants for marasov and stuff like that but yeah no it's great to take what you've learned and do it put it into a costume that you really love she ran away oh because i think she's gonna give an example but yeah uh i'm very excited if you do start doing that oh uh oh yeah no warlock solstice i'm right that's fair Whatever you make, I would love to see. I don't know if you're in the Discord, but we do have a cosplay channel to think. I think you're in the Discord. Wherever you work on stuff, please share yeah. it. I would love why to see it. Why aren't I in the Discord? I don't know. I don't why aren't know. you in my <laughs> Discord? Yes, this is a very good example of perfecting and working on something that you have been working on for a while. Talk about your little baby there, Marie. I brought my baby. A lot of people think he's creepy because the eyes follow you, <laughs> and he's just like... <laughs> But I love him. I I know, Hannah, I know you hate TikTok, but I put a TikTok up asking people to oh vote gosh, whether they did. thought my dog was cuter <laughs> or the Picasso was cuter. Picasso and was... a lot of no, a lot of people were like both. And I'm like, you guys are fucking cheaters. <laughs> so how, mood. how many no, times? But a lot of people were like, the dog. Yeah. That thing's nightmare fuel. I was like, okay, sorry. How many times have I you? Love him, how many he's... times have you made Picasso? How many Picasso? A lot, made? dude. Dude, he, his Can eyes I... do look creepy right Can now. Can I get one? How many you got? <laughs> <laughs> he's gonna be my shop buddy. I want one. <laughs> He'll follow um, you around. They're really nice. To, I can. I will say they're really nice to hold. Like they definitely have like a nice heft and like they feel really good. Yeah, look. <laughs> He's so cute. I can't. Cats over there, like, no. (laughs) Oh man, cat, you're not into this. Cat, you're not into this. So who? (laughs) Watch, Ariel's gonna get banned off Twitch. Oh well, just don't like get naked, please. (laughs) Oh, don't. Oh damn. (laughs) Please keep your pants on. Well, actually, if you don't, if you don't stand up, I don't really care if you're wearing pants. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) <laughs> all right oh, but man. yeah i've made this guy like god so many times now i've done like a urethane mold a silicone mold i've uh two silicone molds so that's three different molds um i've done two hard shell mother molds and then i've i've had to adapt my hard shell mold oh, three times and then I think I've done like five or six casts of this guy. So this has definitely been one of those projects that like broke my, oh, I'm never going to redo a cosplay rule. Yeah. 
for sure. I think it's totally okay as long as you're Up learning something new and you're really passionate about it. Like, I think that's fine. Yeah. It's Gucci. I mean, I'm all for wearing the same thing, like, over and over again, though. My my Chandra is, we call it the workhorse cosplay now because she's gotten me a lot of work. But, um, yeah, I made her in 2016. So, she old. Marasov was made in 2015. Like, these are all costumes I just, like, and I still need to remake, or, well, Hannah, when I get to come over and do a fitting in your, in that room and not in your kitchen, I need your help to help me fit my vest so I can stop thinking about it because I'm so tired of thinking about it. Her vest is sure, cursed. I need you to come over, too, because the hem on Princess Buttercup is so freaking big, I, I can't do it myself. I, like, I keep putting it on okay. and going, like, yeah, I'll do it. No, okay. I can't. So... I, need, I need a person. So you were mentioning, um, real quick, like redoing something over and over again, right? Yes. So you can make it better. Well, there's also the redoing something over and over again, and you get nowhere. So these right here are oh, there they are. gems that I've been working on for a Starfire cosplay for a friend of mine. And these freaking things, I'm running into like 30 different problems with them. And it doesn't matter how many times I got to redo them, I'm going to redo them until I get it right. So, I mean, and I got, I have like probably $100 worth of resin in these little pucks that aren't going to work for anything. But I'm just going to still keep redoing them until <laughs> until I get it right. So, yeah, I think I, I have like a, I'm sure I have a drawer of like misfits of things somewhere because I'm like, I don't want to get rid of this. I don't know what to do with it. <laughs> what do well, I I've do? I've got a new strategy. I 3D printed a sphere, and then I used, and I coated it so I can make it nice and smooth. Then I gotta make the cast in this, and then use a pressure pot so I don't get all these, all these crazy weird bubbles and everything. But, anyway. I have a friend that can stir saying, so can slowly, she gets rid of all crazy. the bubbles. And I don't I just, understand. I'm trying to mention, you can go crazy just remaking something so many times. That's yes. all. I mean, I got five of these things, but I have no idea what to do with any of them. So. Throw them at people. <laughs> I really I want to make new new Molly swords. Paperweight. I'm, I made a second set for Tal that thankfully mm. has now arrived and he enjoys. But they were okay. so much nicer than the ones that I originally made for myself. Like, the it's sanded so much nicer, it's finished better, things are better aligned. I had a different like design for the handles and the electronics are really good. And the ones mm -hmm. I have for myself, I look at it and I'm like, wow, these are fucking ugly. <laughs> <laughs> but the problem is, I, I got I got them signed at C2E2, so now I'm like, well, I have the signed ones, and I can't remake the blades because they're signed, and I can't remake the handle because I have to rip everything apart, and there's no more room for electronics, so I'm just like, I want a nicer pair also. Fuck. Yep, that's a mood. Mm -hmm. I just want to say goodnight, Rainbow. Thank you for coming Night, by. Rainbow. You are Thank you, you are so by. awesome being here. Next time we'll play Magic and we can play each other Godzilla style. Um, that was weird. I don't... That could be weird. Never mind. Anyway. <laughs> <laughs> I was confused. This is what happens in streams. I just wanted to let you know. Oh, uh, oh, oh, Fearless. Oh, that's right, because we were talking about that when we were at the shoot together. Uh, you're down a rabbit hole now, getting in the CR bug. I guess now is the perfect time where you don't have to really, like, catch up to anything. So just do it. Pound it out. Do it. As Scanlan would say. Pound it out. Yee. Suffering. There's no more content. I still haven't done season one yet, and I know it. Uh-oh. Wait. Whoa, whoa. Oh, you I got OCR, Critical Role. Oh, yeah, I Critical Role, sir. I see how it is. It's stupid, stupid people. Uh, season <laughs> one is great. I definitely think you should watch it. It's probably one of my, it's one of my favorites. She's I, 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 I know, All of you guys have been convincing me to watch Critical Role. I think every single one of you guys, except for Angry Pixie, but all, all of you guys have tried to convince me to do watch Critical Role. Well, you should. Cosplay should Critical Role, except for you. Yep. Oh. Wait, really? Yep. No. I just realized we all. <laughs> yeah. We all we no. mostly shoot in critical role costumes together. I was yeah. there, wasn't I? Is that the one at Emerald no. City this last year? No. Okay. Well, no. I mean, we may have all. critical role. Well, yes, you were there. You, yeah. Emerald City, quote, quote. You were there while we were all in, in critical yeah. role stuff. 
That is correct. Oh, I didn't know half you. But I was not there. Yeah. Okay. I was not there. No. Oh, but, okay. I was there. What do I gotta do? Do I gotta cosplay the green dude? The, the fjord? Dude? Yeah. 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 Fjord, and then you can be the Everyone fjord cosplays fjord. him though. Like, is there any other male characters in You could be role? emo Everyone Caleb and fjord. shoot fire at people. Caleb? Caleb. Percy, you'd be a great Percy. You would but be that's okay. that's season one. Yep. So what? Do it. <laughs> do it. Okay. The 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 uh, you know what? I got the I still haven't watched season the one either, us hanging so. out. Okay. Percy and then Caleb? I don't yeah. like Percy. He's like an old dude. Caleb <laughs> I can't pull that off. He's what do you mean? Old. He's I not old, he's just got off. he's just got hair like that. Oh my god. Okay, I'll be I'll be telling myself that when I'm old too. I'm not old. I just got hair like this. Yeah, I I love Percy. Scanlan gets to I you know what everyone probably has seen it, but I don't want to be. A oh, Fearless says Percy. Spoiler can't person. Be when it's sick. Yeah. <laughs> Thank Do you, it. Amanda. Percy gets to be in love with Vex, and she's she's hot. I mean, I don't know. Just... Huh? Let me get something finished. Let me oh, get one forever. cosplay finished, please. Shush. Percy is like 25 or something, says my sister in chat. She's very protective of oh. this because she drew a lot oh, okay. of Percy. Yeah, she's very okay. Oh my gosh. Okay. It is almost 10 p.m. Yeah, I'm sorry. We've been talking forever. So we're going to. Here, we're gonna... I need to do this. Is sign. it because I missed minutes. We, I know. I was like, we'll be done soon. And then we oh, all just like, talked. Of you. <laughs> so this is what happens. We all like really love each other or something. But anyway, please feel free to DM me here or go. Here's the Discord link again. Uh, post in there. Tell me uh, what you liked about it. Maybe tell me some technical stuff that could be improved on since this was the first time I did this. Um, and if you have a topic you're thinking of, I kind of have a list of some things that are my go to's for panels and stuff. Um, so we're going to definitely talk, uh, or hopefully I'll be able to do more of this. Cause I think, uh, I think it went pretty well. We got, we had a pretty active chat, which yeah. was really awesome. And, yeah. um, it just, it's fun to talk Honestly, about cosplay. I really do like this too. Cause it's, it's like just a hanging out talking cosplay thing. I think it's really neat. Yeah. And then you guys don't have to listen to me talk all the time. <laughs> <laughs> well, we while well, we're on time for the panel, so that's good. I know I'm uh, never on time. Chat knows. I'm like, I'll be on maybe seven thirty, and then I'm like, ah, oh, sorry, there's a cat in my lap, and then they have to no wait. There's one in the back going. Yeah, you're five minutes. Okay. Yeah, and I get to dress really comfy. With, uh, two hours. <laughs> I know. I'm so sorry. <laughs> At least we know now how long these panels can go for future reference, so we know how to streamline. Because uh, if yeah. we just yeah. keep going, man. I made <laughs> time. Half the time yelling at you about safety. Yeah, that'd be fun. Yeah. A, a photography photo yeah. shoot channel with definitely. Would be great. Oh, sorry, fearless. Oh, Let me. Dude, I will. Yes. I will oh, send sure. invites and stuff. Yeah. I just have to write it down before I forget. Ow, my shirt. Oh, is it trying to murder me? <laughs> What's happening? Okay, hey, fearless photo works. Is that your Instagram? Is that the Instagram? Uh, yeah. Yeah, I think that's works. the same name, right? Got a yeah. Uh, my brain okay. stopped working. Okay. Anyway, um, I'm glad we also stopped on the how to find us page. So we'll just do one quick roundup really quick just to remind everyone who you are again so they can match the face to the place to find you. If I was more prepared, I would have made a quick Thanks exclamation point thing, but I didn't. I'm very sorry. Here's, so, here's my, Marie, you go first because your puppy's adorable. Remind us who you are. Hi, I'm Marie. I'm Angry oh, Pixie Design, way. and I'm on Instagram and only on twitter occasionally i really don't like it that much so find me on instagram or i don't know uh tiktok tiktok <laughs> i have been doing a lot of tiktok lately to hannah chagrin yeah tiktok uh, yeah oh what order um, we're going in so i guess oh. i'm next yeah um yeah. Uh, my name's Kat. You can find me on Instagram at Valkyrie Studios or on Twitter at Cat of Valkyrie. That's that one's kind of more a blend of just me, like work stuff, so like three D modeling, video games, but also like cosplay and random junk. It's kind of everything. But I do I do post cosplay stuff there, but only cosplay stuff is on Instagram. If you just want more of that. I can go. I am Miss Tayo. You can find me on Instagram or Facebook. I never use Facebook. So really find me on Instagram. Um, that's really where I live. So, I mean, I have a Twitter too, but ignore that. Just Instagram. And uh, I'm Kent Cosplay. You can find me on Instagram at Kent underscore Cosplay. I'm, I have a 
Same thing on Twitch. Um, I have a new page called World's Finest Props that you guys should follow too Ooh, if yeah, you like yeah. me. Um, it's World's Finest Props. It's just now kind of in the beginning. I'm kind of starting to kind of build things, put stuff on the Etsy, start making things a little bit more. So um, anyway, that's exciting. That's I picked the perfect time during a pandemic to open up a shop. So uh, <laughs> this was a plan before all this happened, it's but it's okay. Fine. <laughs> Perfect timing, then. Uh, I have a cheat. I can just click a button that says, here's all the places you can find me. So, ha, ha, ha. I figured since we were talking about something creative, I'm making us huge. Uh, I'm going to actually raid a channel uh, of someone I actually haven't raided in a while. I know I don't really raid at night, but we have actually people online. It's a miracle. Um, and they are doing body paint. I thought that could be fun. They're doing a Cheshire oh, cat. Cool. This is AF Kate, if you've oh. ever heard of her. She is cool. So let me type the command, but I can type AFK. Oh, and I even have two raid commands you can bring with you. Oh, should I click a button? Oh no, what did I do? No, we're good. Uh, we're here ready. they are. Boop, boop. Copy and paste those in the chat when you go over there. The raid went, oh, where's the angry? I effed up, you know what, screw it, Never mind. I clearly <laughs> effed up. <laughs> I don't know why it's just, they're angry like that. I'm sorry. Okay, anyway, don't forget to keep it light and keep it bubbly, and we'll see you on Monday, friends. Love you. Bye. See you guys. Bye. Goodbye. Bye.